down that sign and go to me music up there, wasn't uh, Everybody all right? All right, we are here again. I mean, you can't just take it lightly now, because somebody gone on. And they're right. When you're talking about from here, we're talking about going on to translate it over from here to the other side. Our goal is when we do make that transformation, we want to be right. Isn't that right? There some years ago, I want to be right. Y'all remember that? I remember no guy came up and go, I, I, I just want to be right. Yeah. A lot of times they just sing song, they don't actually mean it. You tell people what they got to do to be right, they won't, com they won't convert to do it. A lot of times, which we all learn, it's easier to say than to do. So I appreciate Mr. Hua for the mindset of um, being willing to make a transformation, do whatever it takes to make it in. That's my goal. I don't know what everybody else's goal is. That's my goal, make sure I make it in. Above all things, above anything, I got to make it in. I don't want to run and get to the end and find out I came up short, find out I missed the mark because I would not make a, because I would not convert. So I wanted to hold us something that was more important than what he um, delegated for us. You know, all of us got a way we could see, <clears throat> especially in society, everybody got their own mindset or uh, what people feel like should, you know, what's right, what delegate right. But I want to make sure I, I followed according to the, the bar, which is the word, you know, above all things, you know, self-preservation. That start with salvation. Anybody want to do self-preservation? We take care of things we own, take care of your salvation. That's what we got to do, like the book told them, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. That's, that's the thing we want to do. That's what I believe they did on the day. Um, when they heard the, the call, the sound, when they got the martyr commandments, when the people started trembling, they told them not to speak to them again unless they die. They were working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. The book said it was removed. Isn't that right? And they told them they didn't want to die. They were working out their salvation. It makes sense. And look, that I don't want you to tell me again. When you told me, I want to make sure I got this right. So I'm working out with fear and trembling. A lot of times, you know, that was a um, that was more um, one call it animated, more where you know you could see a person actually in fear and watch them trembling. But for us, we started to consider what he uh, mandates for us to do in order to keep from moot dying or being murdered or being slaughtered, crucified. All that's covered under moot. It ain't just dying, slaughter, or murder. And uh, <clears throat> um, I don't know um, how much you really think about it, but you should. You know, time to time, I think when people kind of consider how um, how imminent danger is and how close you are to out of here and staying in here, I mean, I just I just never seen the world in the state it's in. I don't know about anybody else. It's never been in this state before. It's just never been. Every time I look around, there's some blowing up, some people got killed. Some shooting, some earthquake, some mudslide. And no doubt, you know, years ago in the 80s and 70s and 60s, things were going on. It just wasn't announced. I don't ever believe it's been as bad as it is now. Um, I, like I tell the young people, I mean, your future is so, you know, so, I don't know, uh, uncertain. I think it believe uncertain. When I say your future, you know, the things like when we, when we were all age, when I was, 12, 11, I wasn't thinking about no dying, no world ending. Was y'all thinking about it? The world ending, no disease coming and wiping nobody out. Or, I mean, just unheard of. One thing you thought about it. if it was. Anytime you seen family or anything, it was somewhere. You don't know them people. You ain't ever going there. Really, it don't even matter. But now, it's right here in your time. You know, mass shootings. You know, you see stuff over overseas. We didn't we didn't have stuff like that. A lot of stuff you just didn't have it. I, I told these people before, everything you see today, people don't want to believe it. It's created by this system. This system created. People don't people hadn't just come up with mass shooting. They they created this. They created this phenomenon. Fear makes people do crazy things. You give up your right for fear. You got someone on you? This man. But if I put a gun in your head. You see that? He ain't got no more, see? Because it fear. He went not see, you see what fear make him do? He had to consider, is his money worth him dying? Right? So now he'll give up something he wouldn't normally do. So you ask yourself this, how much fear had they created to make you give up things you do? That's how they get you to do it. You give up your rights. People give up a lot of stuff out of fear. Listen, the Klan did it to us. They kept people from going outside. You know what I'm saying? Go out to the boogeyman gonna get you. They were riding, they gonna hang it, they care, they tell you. They said, boy, I, I catch you around here again, boy. The white folk told you that you don't play with them, do you? I'm telling you, you don't go back and say, I'm gonna stick, I'm coming back. You better have you something with you. And mark that as your last day on the planet. 
Cause them white boys tell you don't come back, they don't wanna see you again. They gonna kill you. And you, you come back, you already ended your life. No doubt, somebody of our people tried them and did it anyway. You want to be successful as far as continuing. They're the only people that can tell you something and it wind up happening to your downfall. We ain't never had no quote, quote unquote man, no nigga of color that went through and just killed no white folks and he's still living, existing. You got plenty of white folks that done it, still him. Well, they older than me, I don't know, Uncle Ted, you know what they call black folk then you growing up? Did you know any black folk don't kill white folk that still live? They fought on Let your own people turn you in. I, no doubt, if you don't probably know you probably heard of some white folk done kill some black folk still living. Same thing, man. Well, yeah, these folks still be living. They just showed a, 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 a German woman, they rolled her in the court. Then she's 98 years old. They got her for the holidays. You know how many murders she responded for? Over 10,000. She was she the secretary for them Nazis. So they said she killed, she responded for over 10,000 Jewish people dying. They rolled that white woman in the court. They put her in there. They gave her a two years suspended sentence. Every time they tiny white lock up white folk, they be old in a wheelchair and they get to go home. Anyone come up and confess, they just show they know something. They'll come confess when they old, they about to die. They don't got a prognosis, they finna die. So I want to go and confess. I, I killed a bunch. They be like, well, come on here, honest fella. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and give you this trial where we give you the suspended sin and let you lie the rest of your day. And them folks say, I'm clean. You'd be surprised how many white folk confess on their deathbed. No, no, ain't no mistake. A lot of these folks, they ain't stupid. Some of the stuff they come up and confess, you like, why they confess then? They say, I'm getting ready to live, I'm make sure I clean myself up. I know that I've been, this whole time I've been living, I know I'm wrong. I've been knowing I killed these folk, folk looking. I'm done. I'd be like, I come down, suck that out, them bastards. I said, I'm give you a mouth. They said, well, I ain't dying. I said, you are now. Suck that little out. Let her get some out of here before you leave him. 90 something years old, 10,000 folk done died. You know, you think they'd have let us walk, rolled up in the wheelchair? They took the wheels out that damn thing. You know, they'd have drug you in that court, they'd have still hung you. Even if you ain't have but a second to live. But this is the system that we signed up for. That's why I'm an advocate. I do need to put my disclaimer again. I am for the liberation. I'm for the freedom and the equality of my people, both religious and a skin tone color. Made no mistakes. I am an advocate for it. Y'all got it. I'm a strong proponent for the liberation of our people. Y'all got me? I won't ever sell out to that. I'm for freedom and equality and justice among our own people. Y'all got it? That freedom from being oppressed by our people to and other people. That's the right to our liberties, the right to be able to speak, the right to be able to inherit, the right to be able to go out and produce, to own, to hold, to manufacture, everything. I'm for that. Y'all got it? I'm from all that and a bag of chips. When they give it to me, I say, hey, where's my bag of chips? Y'all right. right? And we ain't complete. They give me everything we ask for, we ain't done until I get a bag of chips. And that right, lays lightly salted. And that right, I don't want to mess with my blood pressure. Make sure I get that lightly salted. But here we are again, again, our young people. Yeah, we got a lot of work to get our young people so they can stay well. This system got y'all sick. That's all it is. You, you wouldn't have been like this before. I, I believe we would have been able to cut ourselves away from these people. And we could have set ourselves up a long time. But it wasn't time. I feel, it couldn't have been time. If it would have been, we would have done it then. But I feel so strong now. It's urgent. And I can see where it's so simple to plan of us just... And it ain't about killing nobody. Everybody that come, we gotta kill white people. You gotta kill white people. You kill them, we're just cutting away from them. You don't have to do. We ain't had to kill nobody when we love Ms. Raheem. I don't know why people keep thinking with it. We just walked out. Ain't that right? Time is showing when they people dying. Look at their own people dying. They keep saying they play Derupt, they play Tanner. Look at they brought Lewin, what's her name? Might well be Monica Lewinsky, Belinsky over there. I don't know how many everybody in Russia named want Vladimir Putin. Well, I don't know how Vladimir, too many of them Vladimir. Y'all niggas use something beside the V. And yeah, right, but anyway, ran that tire crock over him for him. Oh, and then kiss his ass in Congress and tell him they gonna give him some billions of dollars. I mean, that's what, we need money for our people. He talking about his city, his citizen dying. Let me get this straight. Our city, our city ain't destroyed. They ain't destroyed the project. They put us in them, then you came and you tore them up. This is how they get you and people don't realize. See, they make it look like opportunity coming in, change transformation. You don't put a man in prison and keep him now for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, then let him out and say, now you've been real bad. Go out here and there and create. What am I going to create? Hell, I've been in here for 30, 40, 60 years. All I know is this. You done took away a life that you done created for me that you knew I couldn't operate outside of this. That's why we got to broaden the horizon of our young people. Our young people, maybe you who are willing that we get through in time this weekend, I'm try to sound talk. Y'all want to sound talk to me this weekend? How many of y'all young people want to talk to me this weekend? How many of y'all come and y'all want to see me beat Alex down, him and Joseph? 
That's all we need. Fight song. Ain't that right? And a bag of chips come with that, too. So that's what I want to do, kind of talk to them. We need our young people. We got to broaden their horizon. I don't want them to be like us. Uh, we complacent. A lot of us, we don't want a whole lot. It don't take a whole lot for us. They take everything. We want all we can get. We behind. Listen, y'all don't believe. Listen, it's a shortage. I ain't gonna, why, why would I tell you? We're going to be the last people to get anything. They're going to get opportunity. They're going to get stamps. They're going to get welfare. They're going to get everything to every other nationality. But uh, we too dumb. We too dumb. Our rappers, our singers, our actors, our football players, athletes, they're not educated. They ought to tell. They right ahead. They know what's going on. If people out here in this system know what's going on, it won't hurt to tell. Whatever you do, hey, hey man, it, it's bad for our people. It's going to get worse than that for our people. I know because I'm inside. Just let us know. Let people know how to prepare. You saw their Christmas look. How many of y'all done see the Christmas chills out here, these people? I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It's finally coming down on. That's how bad the world. Y'all know how the unit would be for Christmas. Man, these folk be it lights everywhere. These folk hurting, boy. They hurting. They ain't send me no criminal card to throw in the trash. I got one of them. Damn, I used to have a pile of little things to go in the trash. But I take that money out of that now. I'm that type of nigga now. I tell them, I said, listen, I don't celebrate Christmas. I will keep this money, though. I need to pay these bills. As long as me on the same pay, I don't celebrate no Christmas. But let me get that chain. <laughs> now, somebody brought a big old thing of candy. I said, I gave it to him. I got a plot. You, you gonna take you can have that stuff. I, I don't want to talk about it. I said, I don't I don't celebrate it. I appreciate the thought. I let people know that I appreciate the thought code. Even though we don't celebrate it, simply because what it attaches to and the whole, you know, it, the whole thing is just built on a lie. And they just completely put it out. And and not only that, it's just so many other things that they connect to. I a lot of I don't celebrate the Thanksgiving. I don't celebrate it. I don't see what to celebrate. My people are not benefactors of this. We the fools that get raped during this time of year. We get raped. Every, they, they don't have a holiday they can give you that actually, what holiday they had that benefit our people? Let me ask something. I asked my mother. When we celebrated Christmas, growing up, did it, was it, it didn't, it didn't bother you to spend that money over that bill money you used to buy Christmas stuff? See what I'm saying? It ain't helping us. Some shit, I'm going to tab and throw away anyway. Ain't going to lay. Y'all know all your excitement that first day. You're going to tear it up. It's, it ain't just, you know how many parents put that stuff in the hole? For the sake of damn kid going to run away, kid hurt, kid want to commit suicide because they ain't get no toy. Man, I take that paper, made that airplane, get your ass out of here. Throw that airplane. So get like that plane. Get your ass out of him. <laughs> right behind that little paper plane. But I mean, they did. I know the folks. It's for the kids. Won't you mind something beside December 24th? If for their ass, they got to get out before they do taxes. Leave it in the store and let it rot. Man, I kept it all year and they want to give you for 70% off. How much he paid for it? Man, can take 7% out of here. How much you get? How much you pay for this? They ain't got another. What? Uh -oh. Sign that piece of paper. I give you another 10% off. You're like, damn, you ain't making nothing. Or are you? You ain't spent nothing. So the only thing y'all be looking at here, you been ripping out this whole year. You can take 70% off now. You could have done that earlier. You hell, I'd have been bought it. But we don't know no better. We be so damn Christmas happy. Oh, look at Jesus. 70% off. I always beat you and make a fool out like of you. The people see you coming. The people know you don't have a brain. They know you don't have a brain. Don't let these people get you upset. Let them kids go ahead and play. Ask the kid when they say, yeah, I got it for Christmas. Say, say your mom don't have to be outside. And say, I'm playing around here. Huh? Rent going up. Y'all ask me to be outside. Don't use that part of it. But let them know, say, when y'all be outside, what them toys going to do for you? How many of y'all kids want some toys? I ain't never saying you want no toy. How many of y'all want some toys? I ain't never wrong. We'll get you a toy. What you want? You want a toy? Ain't no, ain't no sin to have no toy. Now, you ain't getting nothing. We ain't wrapping it up. Ain't no damn white man getting to take clown on. If he do, you know something to come with that. Ain't nothing wrong with having no toy. We don't teach no toys, no sin, do we? No. We don't teach no toy. No I tell them, buy it another time. You want to buy your kids something? Buy them. So you got to wait on these people to buy nothing for your kid. I had my wife, her, her son, need to buy my kid crib and stuff. Take this shit right to the trap. Wrapping out, just dropping the trap. No belt. I know she no belt. And my kid say, see this? In the trash. No, right back in the house. They wire that damn thing wrapped up, just took it right in the trap. She knew better before she bought it. Got out. They tell you, I ain't go back in no trap for that shit. Got right out. Got out. Going right in the house. Walk out there. See this? She knew better before she gave it to you in the trash. They play sport. They get that trophy around. They come out. I said, what the? Come to the trash. So you see this? You don't need this. They're these people idle. To the trash. Got out. Let the guy man get and play with it. I said, don't make it nothing. You got to believe in yourself, son. You don't need these people to give you no shit like that. That's their idol God. That's why they get it. People, let me tell you something. A lot of stuff people don't think about. Look at how they get What people do when they get them trophies? 
throw them away, whatever. Do what? Hang them up. Kiss hell out of it. Sing to it. Drive through the street. These people don't realize it's a God. He told you about these wood, stone, and gold. What color they be? Silver. He told you about them fashioning with silver and gold. These people still don't get in their mind. They don't mean that. I know it. Let somebody come in. Let me come break that damn arm off. Tell me there ain't no God. So let me do something. Why are them folks trying to tear my ass up? I'm going to be packing. I ain't, I ain't going to break it off. I ain't going to have nothing. That's just, this, uh, this is foolish. Isn't it? Break it off and have an empty hand. No, you break it off and you have something in your hand. So I know you don't like it. Don't move. <laughs> All right, that's y'all. Go on there and break it off. Don't have nothing in your hand. See what happens. Them people love them gods. That's what they, see, we, we don't realize, we don't feel like we are successful. We don't feel like we have something unless we meet white protocol. That's just being on it. You work out, you hurt. Ask them folks what they went and said, tell them how you got there. Oh. A lot of sleeping nights, practicing, old, working through injuries. Say, so that's your God. That's what you do for your God. Ask them, say what you do. Say how I'm going to say, man, I ain't really do nothing. It was nothing. They're going to tell how to practice, working overtime, working through injury, work, running like, told him to cut his fingers off. Can y'all make him in the game? Cut him off so he can get back in the game. What y'all think? Where y'all think God was? Now, football, oh, it, how many of y'all kids don't know who running light was? Let me see. How many of y'all raise your hand? Y'all don't know who running light is. Any of my kids, y'all know who running the light is? How many of y'all don't know? Well, somebody put up their hand. Y'all see a man with them damn finger gone and say, your name running the light. <laughs> so I still don't know who you are. I just want to see. Do you understand you cut your fingers off? I don't know why you did that. It may not. But see, for a man, he looked at the team, the game, and that was his God. That's the only problem with a lot of these games. I know people see the system will program you like these games. I don't, I, it's rare I get to catch a game. I'm, I'm, I like Tom Brady. I, don't, I probably caught a game he don't play. He pissed me off so bad I can't hardly watch him in a while. I'd be so damn mad I just turn the TV. I said, this is another reason why I can't watch now. I just lost the fear because my heart ain't in none of these people. You can't put your, these people don't, what went from being a game in a yard, these people made it and turned it to a God. And these people that do stuff for this stuff, they'll give everything they got. They'll, look at the man, the man second right here married for a game. A 17 week game, that man threw his marriage away. That man been married for what them, 20 something years, and you throw it away for a football game. This is how retarded the man is. This is just retarded. And nobody should tell us, man, you retarded. Hey, you ain't playing worth a damn. That's the first thing I like to tell. Tom, how you doing? He said, how you doing, Tom? I said, man, you, I just, you ain't playing worth a damn. Really, it's time for you to go. It's time you to be just just hold up the game. Look how the, it has y'all don't realize that football and basketball and baseball have messed up now a lot of our, more of our people that's helped because we lost the fundamentals of how we rear our kids up. Let me tell you what happened years ago, before we were integrated into a lot of these sports, you know, on their level of what they want to call it. Hell, we had professional before. It's, you don't call it professional unless you play that stuff like swag ain't real football. How the hell you don't play that? You got a football, you in a stadium, you're doing the same thing. Because white people set your standard. So if you don't play white, it ain't nothing. You ain't professional until you play white professional. So they get you every time they play you. So look at who winds up having the most control of our kids, the coach. Coach had you doing stuff mom and daddy can't get you to do. Coach ain't got it. He yelling for the team. But coach takes some little easy shit. You ain't going to be able to play. Don't dress out. <laughs> what do I do, coach? Parent been on your ass, raised you, did all this stuff, and they got met around him, and a coach got more pull of you than they got. That just man, hell, you love hell out coach. You don't never pray for coach to die, you love coach. Coach get you in, coach do their coach come in, all the stuff they do. So now, our kids have lost the fundamentals of how, or what they've been taught and what they should have got from the home. So look at how many of them wreck their life when they get in there. Just like Tony O'Brien is a good uh, instance. I remember Tony O'Brien, just y'all played when he was a rookie. Remember when we went down there, y'all played. Clean cut, none of that shit coming out of his head, none of this stuff. One no, one, one no arrogant kid, but you see how that, that system, don't just point out, it's the system that changes them because they get in this world and they create this, this phenomenon kind of with them that they're untouchable from college and they always wreck their lives in the pros. College lets you get away with everything. You figuring, if I'm getting away with all this in college, I'm raping girls, I'm getting drunk, getting out of DUI, damn near attempted murders. I know when I get in the league, I'm going to get away with more. The league will stop every one of them. Yeah. What that boy, right? Ray Rice. Remember he slapped this old lady? Yeah. And she fell out between that elevator? Yeah. Good running back, law. Lost a damn good little running back. That was a nice little hit, though. Oh, yeah. What did he say she did? She spit on him? Yeah. See, that's why both of them got problems. 
You know, when you got that kind of disrespect, when you on your mouth to spit on your man or he spit, come on. That, I know not everybody caught the video of him. So, this, y'all thought that the first time of him? So, you know what they take, Sarah? And spit on, you know what they take to do that? What, what I think about you? See, the disrespect been now. So him, him, everybody made by him. Why nobody didn't teach that you don't spit on nobody? We just spit on the ground. Especially when you talk about husband and wife, that's how bad off we are. You making the money. You got that. What is it? Economics hurt them. You see why well, money hurts us just as well as not having it. So we don't teach the fundamentals of how, and that's something most how women I like to work on with us, especially married couple teaching on. We got to get that level of respect back from one another. Because it's bad when they get there. I just spit on you. And I, I think that lesson, and where this going? Then I hit you and knock you out and you lay down in the elevator. I think he got rid of hit again. Did he kick her? Or the elevator closed on her? I think he hit her and the elevator just closed on her. Whatever happened. That man lost their career. Then both of them sent up there and she wanted to say about, you know, trying to let him get back. That's sure how damn irritated she is. She was looking at what the money, not the fact, hell, we got a problem. I shouldn't have been spent on you. Damn, shouldn't have knocked me out. So both of us got a problem. We both need help. Damn this football. You know what I'm saying? He's <laughs> trying to get me out. I, I can still play. And then, see, they set him up. Let me tell you something. Them white boys do it all the time. Other players do it all the time. If you they boy, they let you get away with a lot of stuff. Ben Rothenberg, two rape. Two rape cases. One here in Milliville, Georgia. Two. Two rape cases. Mike Vick, they ran his ass out by that dog. Mm -hmm. Ben Rothenberg didn't lose one season. They will suspend his ass first three games. You talking about a rape? Rape? We down, we bring you back here for rape? Never seen none of the time no commentator said, damn, Ben Rottenberg on the field and has attempted rape case. He's going for rape. Two of them. I mean, anybody else, you'd been out of the league. They'd have told the face league, said, we can't put you out here, man. We can't have you raping. Went. You know what that shows? What would the outcry of the women? What would that Me Too movement? See, you don't know how people pick who they were. Me Too ain't run out there for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, y'all remember the video he told? They, well, they had the, the, the reporter had on the camera, and they video him outside. He told him, he said, man, he said, you a celebrity, do what you want. He said, I walked right up to him. He said, I shove my hand in their vagina, stick my tongue in their mouth. He said, you could, the man just laid out, he recording him the whole time. Not one Me Too came out. That's amazing. Nobody come out. Y'all pick, that was a win. Just straight hypocrite. They pick who they want. They went out to be a car for 1970. Hey, what you think they gonna do that Jello? Hey, you say, look, that Jello pillow pot. You know, damn well you getting raped. I'm about a little bit. I ain't no one, but damn, I ain't finna be drinking with you. That's how you look that pillow, but you know, you just little pretty pop. No damn way he was a raper. Anybody just seen that? But they don't look at it. They look at I don't go get in the wall up the street. I get in here and get a drunk, pull up something to drink. It ain't like nobody, oh, I'll go grab somebody off the street in their mind. That's how I perverted their mind. Because Hollywood do it all the time. Hollywood, these stuff. These people do it all the time. You see, now all that dirt come back to hurt them. Like now we find out about them. Most of them rapers. Most of them child molesters. That's just, this, this is the thing we look at. Everybody get like, it's so um, crazy now hearing about it. These people been like that. It's always been, it's just never been publicized. Now people tired of them. People on the inside start looking at this shit that went on too long. Was it Har Harvey Weinstein? Soon as, you know, as soon as Ed Gary go to jail, white folk, first thing they do, go get a wheelchair. I'm sick of that shit. I'm gonna go get me, I'm gonna start whipping white folk ass, I'm just sitting in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I see y'all. See y'all can't do nothing. Now give me suspend the sentence. That would do. Start whipping ass and just take a wheelchair. As soon as the police come, just put a wheelchair on the air like that. And like you can't respond. They be like, oh, okay, two years suspend the sentence. You go home. I'm sick of this. How you want in the wheelchair for you raving ass? Soon as your cake come, now they gotta roll your ass. In. How you got crutches with a wheelchair? One or the other. You know what I'm saying? Just stop it. It's like at what point? Do we say enough is enough and we're sick of being disrespected with these people of things that's happened to us for so many years? Mm. This has been a constant. Nobody going back to try none of these white people like Strong Thurman, he was living, who raped his, who raped they maid and got that woman pregnant. That's a double crime. That man wound up being one of the top centers these people had. They love Strong Thurman. He a hero to white people. Raper. Can you imagine that man? He was a, high, he was a young high. He wasn't even high school. What he was, what, about 19, I think he was? So I showed that when they first rape. We well, just raped the maid. I gotta say, how many times I had to see the maid after I rape her? She got she quit every day. So why don't let go with our just rape? So when I'm seeing you there, why don't I tell myself? I ain't what did I do? I mean, I ain't like you human. You're not human. I raped you and you work for me and I see you every day. These people don't have, don't y'all understand? This is the system we in. This is why I'm a proponent for there needs to be a separation. 
The so-called Negro needs to be able to govern. He needs to be able to educate himself. He needs to be able to support himself. He needs that system. He needs that break to where he can do business and where there can be a mutual respect. Right now in America, and the so-called Negro can believe it, there's not a mutual respect. You have respect for him, and your respect is really fear because he'll kill you. He does not respect you because you don't have a power. He needs to feel the. He needs to have the same fear. You fear him because he can do what to you, and he needs to know you'll kill him. That's a mutual respect. That's why you don't go grab. That's why they say, man, they go grab. They go kill us a little white baby. He think, hell no, I get called that white baby. Hell no, no white folk. What are they gonna do? Them? Give up probation? Suspend the sentence? Y'all sure y'all speculate? They need to have that same feel. They're, they're, when two white boys, ten white boys, so they go grab this white, this black kid, whatever, they didn't have, hell no, they catch up, what they gonna do? See, mutual respect. Mutual respect, mutual feel. They need, we need to have dollars. We need to have a dollar with our pictures on them. We do, we need to have money to look like it. We need to get, if you gonna get our kids a sense of pride, how many of y'all played Monopoly before? Who pitched on that money? Who, who pitched that on that money? I don't care. Them said who? What's the name of the game? And the Monopoly man pitched on the money. So you playing a game and that man on the money, how you think it's going to work out for you? See, the Monopoly man never lose. You lose. So you need a system in place for you to, so you can quit losing so much. I'm just telling you. I know, I know people, oh, that's crazy. It's crazy because you, you can't think no farther than what they teach you. You need things to look like you. You need things to favor you. They need to create shows that's reality of people that look like you. You need stuff. You need stuff. It ain't got to be comical to where you just a damn idiot. You have stuff that can be funny. You can still be successful. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't take anything away from your people. You can have serious shows teaching and showing your people in a better light. You see people that look like you transforming from a drug dealer. This happens every day. Nobody talk about it. They look, whenever we're a drug dealer, you're going to stay a drug dealer you die. Whenever we're a criminal, you're going to stay a criminal you die. White folk do stuff, look how they transform. Yep. And everybody call that a great American story. Yep. See, even that criminals are hero. Jesse James, tell me one public survey he did. Billy the Kid. Let, let, hold on, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight now. Let me get this straight. Do anybody hear people just talking? I'm talking about people talking about our young people. Anybody ever heard the conversation, how are young people are? And what are young people typically be doing with each other? Fighting and kidding each other. What the hell was Billy the Kid doing? These folks, he is a hero of white people, a 14-year-old boy who killed, what, six or ten people. He celebrated. Okay. Billy the Kid, tell me what white kids said, Billy the Kid a hero, and they're going to say, we finna charge him with terrorism. Supporting terrorism. Jesse James. They were killers and robbers. And you know what they tell about our young people? All y'all do is kill and rob each other. Who these people were killing and robbing? And they celebrated. Bush Cassidy and Sunday's kid. See, when I tell y'all that white people, I'm talking about not every individual, but the system is not fair. Tell them to explain to you how these people are celebrating heroes. When I was a little kid, I'm telling you, you grew up, people, you'd have called these kids a cowboy. You want to be these for? I'm Jesse James. Hell, I ain't learning about Freight Jane later. He must have, he probably been just, probably been, he didn't really make it like that. But anyway, all these people celebrate. They hero. When I was a little kid, they just say you little shit, little badge, and little gun. That's who you want to be. Yeah, yeah, who you were trying to be. Now, you can't go around and say you no black boy or no black man or no kid saying you some black guy who done killed white people and robbed banks. They're going to tell you how wrong you are, how dysfunctional you are, how you supporting a bad system. And yet, we walked around with these white folks shit on, celebrating these people who killed and robbed and murdered. See, I told you, y'all know people not fair. People don't want to be fair. Because, see, honesty hurt people. They don't want to talk, but they take that time to say, these young folks, you know, these young folks out here, they am shooting each other. And I'm with them, it's wrong. But hell, who, who talked about Billy the Kid? How he became, did black people make him a hero? See, nigga can't even think. Then we make him a hero. But as soon, soon as our young people talk about some black rapper who might have done something, or somebody rapper who done shot somebody on the street, these, none of these young black rappers, they, they notorious for their shoot with them, not do that. Oh, you can't support them, it's wrong. These people, the devil, they, 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 they the pits of hell, or whatever they come with. 
Why nobody never said that about Billy Kidd now? That's the only problem I got. Why are we not talking about these child murderers? Everybody act like when our kids doing something, the shit just started. These people been killing since the 15, 1600, 17, 1800. Nobody talk about these people. They loved. They'll put the move out here, here they celebrated. And you know what they'll tell you the reason why they celebrate them? Because at that time, they were fighting for good causes. We ain't fighting for no cause. Let me tell you why a lot of these people killing each other. They set the framework to make them hurt each other. Y'all, man, let me tell you something. These folks have an idea. Most, most, the average these rapper, they, have, they don't have a brain. They don't realize these people, they, they, actually, um, they actually create the hate between these rappers. They, they, they rap ain't got enough damn sense to hate each other. They create that fiction. They are fictionized to get it. They put a girl in the middle of it. Roam your damn mind, my ass. What you think about, uh, what you think about that rapper Carrie? You know, he ain't, he ain't shit, he ain't all that, you know. Now she done went back and told some shit, now he said, way off of what I said. Instead of Carrie getting with me, it ain't went that way. Carrie like, that punk ass nigga down, I got something for him. Now I mean him blazing. We don't realize, hypothetically, she called it problem. Cause they, 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 they implanted her in, they caught, look, all these folk mess with the same people. Know that this is your problem. Look at your circle. Y'all mess with the same trashy ass guys, same trashy ass women. And all they doing, y'all don't realize these ain't them a CIA plant that set in here to make y'all hate each other. Most of them ain't got enough brain to hate each other. And what, tell them, give me a real car while you hate them. I just don't like that sis ad. You know his sis ad? You know sis ad, you saying something. Most of them ain't never been in no street. This guy ain't come from no damn street. Stop it. Hey, how the hell everybody rapper come from the street? Just stop it. My son, these folks don't know about no damn street. Hey, they, they got all these guys ain't been no street. Just stop it. Just stop it. Everybody want to fight somebody in the street so they can get credibility. Why you got to use another nigga to get credibility? Step and be your own person. We got to teach our people better. Why I got to come and knock you out so me to be somebody? Then somebody got to knock me out, then somebody mm -hmm. got to knock them out. We never ended with hurting each other and killing each other. We got to get a better system and play for our people. But if we don't address these issues and talk about real problems we got, we ain't going to never fix nothing. Look at who, look who set the standard. Now, our people, our kids so pissed poor, they follow our rappers. Yeah. These guys not stop. They see our people killing each other. They groups killing each other. At some point, somebody going to man up and say, shit, stop now. That's Have right. a concert and this shit stop now. That's Drop the mic. Shit, stop now. Ain't no concert now. We finna clean this shit up. That's right. And I just, man, we gotta start teaching them how to love each other. We gotta start treating each other better. That's right. We ain't gonna ever get nowhere. We the people, I'm telling you, listen. Now, we'll never kill more people than white people kill. Now, let's go ahead and go with it. Cause y'all know our numbers rapid. What, Chicago, 1800, something like that, 1400 a year? Mm. That's January to December. Mm. Russia invaded Ukraine in February, we in December. How many people done died? How many niggas involved with them killers? Why ain't nobody, and guess what? FBI ain't gonna show them statistics. They ain't gonna be blowed up and they ain't gonna fade, they ain't gonna come along and condemn them. As soon as me and Ryan shoot at each other and miss, they gonna put that shit in statistics and they gonna hurt the whole race. We ain't even hit each other, that done killed the whole race. Them two shots, me and him made each other miss cause we shoot like this and shit. And we're trying to hold up our pants and shitting for at the same time. And keep them pissing ourselves so we don't shout out all kinds of shit except for each other. That gonna just set all the record right there. These white folks dropping bombs, killing more people than a bullet can ever kill. These, listen, and you talking about innocent civilians, that's all they're talking about. These gang members, they killing innocent people. Ain't they showing the news saying that Russia hitting West Civilian State? Every day they're doing this shit. Oh, relentless. But we're not here. They don't ever publicize it too. You know what they'll say? Well, that's war. Well, hell, why they ain't war when these people doing each other? The way they can categorize it and the words they use change the way you look at things. You'll try to say, that's the military. Hell, don't you know what these kids are? These kids are formulating their own group. They're military. Yes, sir. See, you don't want to recognize them because they ain't got on your shit. I don't know why y'all keep thinking you'll call something a game. What is a game? I'm sorry, what is a gang? The military, police, these are gangs. You just play word games with them. That's all they are, they're organized group. That's all they are. And these people set us up, we just gotta change the mindset of our people. But if you don't give them something else, then you ain't gonna change their opinion. Their opinion is saying on killer MF, do what I gotta do, because that's what they know. You gotta implant something in their mindset, know something different. 
Don't just go talking to ass about no stop shooting. That don't make no sense. You got to talk with them and get them something else to know. When you give a person something else to know, they can stop doing what they're doing. That's how I stopped dealing drugs. You got to learn how to do something else. You just can't tell nobody to stop dealing drugs. Why? Because it's wrong. It's a lot of shit wrong. Why I got to stop dealing drugs? I'm making money. I'm paying my bills. Then you got to give them something else. Don't let nobody make no food. They're going to help people and stop. They're not going to stop from you just talking. That's right. Hell, okay. They talking their ass in Russia and Ukraine. They stop shooting. Get their ass something else. People ain't gonna change you, give them something else. Come on, y'all know how you do. You just kick a kid, kid mess with something, you wanna get something from, you just deflect, get their ass something else, get what you got out of the way. Come on, same thing. I remember that. You got a kid, kid, you deflect, you get their ass something else, get them going, and ease away from there, you're done. Distract, that's all you do. Same thing you gotta do with your kid. You wanna stop killing each other, you wanna stop doing a game about, give them something else. Stop waiting on white people to create program for black problems. White people already created, created, uh, created program for black problem. Crack cocaine. Automatic weapons in our community. How the hell, we can't get computers, but we got automatic weapons in our community. That's right. Why the hell you buy the automatic weapons on in our community? That's right. Where the, the hell a 13 for to get a Drake from? Hell, I had to go to pawn shop and buy mine, and I had to show my gun permit. That's right. Where the hell you get a Drake from on the street? How the hell everybody got a Drake? That's right. I'm just, let's be practical. Let, let, how many of y'all know where to go get a drink from out the street? How the hell do you kids know except somebody giving them to them? Quit being stupid. Y'all know damn well these kids know no, they ain't going to no pawn shop. They ain't breaking in no store. Your police, your government are putting them in these neighborhoods, giving it to these kids. These kids, we were coming up, we had 22, 32, 38s and shit like that, or 3, 5, 7. Had a drink. And we, well, then we had a little water. That was a little later on. <laughs> The water was a Mac 10, you know what I'm saying? Shot 45. <laughs> His mouth was nasty. <laughs> he do like that. He just spit. His mouth was nasty. Ooh. I remember one time he opened his mouth. <laughs> that damn thing bent the car. Oh my goodness. Little water just spit. That damn thing just bent up. You like, get little water mouth nasty. But anyway, that's past life. And I like flashbacks. That's how it was. But these people are putting these weapons out here to our young people. And our young people, now, let's go along. We're going to say, they're still responsible. They got to make choices. That's what they did. They limited their choices. I, I, let me tell you something. A couple of things why you ain't selling drugs, why you ain't out here killing people, why you ain't. Let's just be practical because you got other things to do. You ain't doing it because your ass so righteous and your ass so smart. You're doing it because you got other things to do. That's what happens when you give a person an education. You give people, you enlighten them to other things. Then you got choices. When you ain't got no choices, hell, a Drake make perfectly good sense. A bag of crack make perfectly good How the hell you gonna tell us? It make perfectly I don't have no other option. Hell, I can't read. I can't write. I'm in a project. I ain't shit folk taking. Folk ask. I ain't got nothing. What makes sense? A book. Get a book and I get educated. How fast I get educated with a book? What's bigger good while? I'm gonna start, I'm stop selling crack. I'm finna get my set again, I'm finna go to college. How long it gonna take? Do I go to college today? What I gotta do? Enroll. Enroll. What else I gotta do? You gotta pay money. What else I gotta do? Or get gotta get I gotta take the interest exam. Then I gotta get accepted. All this shit gotta have. Then when class start tomorrow, then as soon as I get through, I get class. Then I gotta apply for financial aid if I can't pay to go. Then I start class the next day. So that week. I get the financial aid, I get all this and get it done, and I start college that week, that Monday. And then by that Friday, I graduate with a degree and I'm hired somewhere. So this story I just told you don't sound realistic. Why the hell you think the drug dealer dumb to you? Why, why the hell you think the game is I'm just kidding. Why the hell you think the game is See, ain't nobody dumb to you. They think the same thing. It's not practical. See, if you're going to get people to do something, you got to set up something that's practical for them. A lot of it's going to start with getting control of our young people while they're young. You can't come, listen, it's just like I say, you, when you want to train a tree or get a tree to go, you get it when it's a sapling. That when it's small, in a little curb bend, you can tie something to it, you can stake it out, and you can change the growth. Don't get no grown-ass oak tree, been here 105 years and try to change where it's going. The only thing you do that is cut it down. And that's what we're doing. We wait till our kids get too old, then we try to cut them down. I ain't nothing you can do with them. You cut it down, but chop it up and burn it. 
So anything we're going to do and correct, then that's why we got to work on it. We're going to come up eventually. It's something we can rehabilitate. Some of them, it's unfortunate. That's just being honest. It's, these are some of the casual we got with our war. We hang the pictures up so we can remember them. I'm serious. Put the pictures up and say, we lost this generation. Some of the that, that'd be practical. Some of hell, we done lost them. They got, listen, when I came along, we smoked marijuana. This was real ass marijuana out the ground smoke. We didn't know nothing about dipping no damn marijuana in no what is synthetic? What is the hell is a synthetic marijuana? It's from the ground. I don't. What is, I don't know how these kids making a marijuana, and I, I, I just I'm just blown away. And now these kids synthetic drugs and fentanyl. I watched this thing. They said they just took. They just captured 4,500 tons of fentanyl. 4,500 tons. Okay. So a ton is what 2,000 pounds. So we're looking at what about 9,000 9, pounds. 9,000 pounds, that's enough to kill 330 Americans. What the hell are you doing with this stuff? That's right. right. They say this stuff is 50 times more than <laughs> heroin. Yeah. Ain't nothing did more damage in the street than heroin. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that did the work. They, that did some, listen, when them boys came from Vietnam, they were straight heroin here. That heroin met them boys up. All right, but listen, straight messed them up. That hair run, that's what they were medicating with. They put them boys right in the jungle, them boys were doing hair run. They hit the street back here, they were straight back on hair run. That's what they did, that's what the Vietnam War was about. Don't listen to these people, Vietnam about getting their hair run. America ain't never went nowhere and fought no war, ain't got no dope. You name the place and I'll show you, you're a liar. You ain't fighting but one or two things, I want your all of your dope. You went to Afghanistan, they got poppy seed rolling that damn place. That's why you stayed there for 20 years. They raked that shit up. That's why they were done. Yeah. 20 years of them seed, you straight. Yeah. Get what them went. Song hit your street and the pharmaceutical come. Pharmaceutical come and get it first, then it hit your street. Yes, sir. Right. Kroger, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, all these damn stuff. Drug, all these central, these little drug stuff. Go in there, listen, tell them folks let you walk back and just go through that. They tell you, oh, no, no, no. Mm. We got drugs back. I know what you got back there. And it's legal. And ain't no police running back there shutting it down either. They're on the street locking up the little man with the bag. Ain't nobody hitting them pharmacists. Nobody hitting the farm. That's where your drugs get. I come from the street. I know how to cook cocaine the whole night. Hell, I don't know how to make no damn fit. No. The whole thing, somebody teaching them to us something. Everything we did, somebody teach it to you. Yeah. Nigga didn't just straight up and just learn how to cook it. I'll tell you all what they did. They put implants on the street that bring you in and teach you how to do it. And that shit start passing around to other people. And now you don't realize they put the people to implant the people in to get it told. I'm telling you, I know how to cook it. Ain't no way in hell a nigga come up and strike up just cooking no cooking. It. it don't even make common sense. Somebody gotta teach you how to do it. It's chemistry. Okay. All right, be a damn fool you want to. I'm telling you, there's no way to just know on your own. You don't just strike up not to cook it. Someone has to teach you somebody to chemistry. That's chemistry. They have to understand cocaine, how to cook it, how to bring it back, how to cool it so it can become a solid. I'm telling you, they put these people, implant them in the neighborhood with people. All you do is teach enough people that they know what they said. Don't tell a nigga what? How to fish? <laughs> well, I told you. I told y'all they'll put, I told they're going to put implant. You an implant. That man said, don't teach a nigga. Don't tell a nigga. He said, how to fish? You not one of us. He not one of us. He not one of us. I ain't never heard that before in my life. Jesse said, no white people, he never said that. He said, don't, te don't tell a black man how to fish? No. No, he'll tell you, don't tell a nigga now. He'll tell everything you know. So all you do is teach enough of us. We tell around. That's how they, they ain't gonna have time for white men to come and do it and show everybody, but you taught enough of our people and you implant them in and they'll teach it to other people. Before you know it, here we are. We started cooking up. I don't know cooking, and we cooking it. When we first started cooking, we cooking in the tubes. You had little, little tubes, y'all know chemist tube. We started cooking it, take a hang of it. What the? You had them test tubes. You had the tubes, you get them in there and you cook it. You just cook up what you had, you just do it. And next thing you know, they start showing them how to cook it. Cook it on the stove, we learn how to cook it in the microwave. You learn the bowls to get, the whole nine. There's no way in the world we'd have known it. I'm telling you, they implanted these people. That's how you learn how to do it.
See, everything that we wind up doing to ourselves, this is just now, I'm not putting all the responsibility on white America or the system. I'm just telling you that you're not conscious or cognizant of the system that's working against you. Because you keep thinking these folks love you, they wear suits and ties, and they cut their hair, and don't put no hand in their face, and look real clean and shit, and dry their car, but they're dirty people. Yes, That's a dirty system you fight. Y'all people, y'all have no idea what you're dealing with. Y'all have no idea what you're dealing with. It's, it's, it's a lot bigger than what you're thinking. All that stuff look good, all them acronyms on them clothes, them acronym people move more dope than anybody. <laughs> That's okay. Let's just be practical. Let me say I bust. Let me see. Should I bust a whole shipload of dope this month? Then all the dope I done bust out. Where the hell all this dope at anyway? What building you got holding all that dope since the war on drugs started? Because it keeps cycling back around. That's all they do is take from one and move it to another. They don't let them let nobody rule for long. The Mexican didn't rule when I would come along. The Cubans were pushing more of it down here. The Cubans, Colombians. Now these people that got involved, now the Mexican got it. They'll move it from them, they'll take it and move it somewhere else too. That's how they you just keep spinning the whole scenario. They don't let no, you think these white folks let the Mexican control everything? The Mexican just the people they use, just like they did us on the street. These white folks don't let nobody, anybody. No way the hell you let no damn Mexican. Damn, all of them together, they're tall, they stand on each other's shoulder. <laughs> folks ain't controlling no damn drug. Can't be that stupid. These folks find whatever they want to. I tell what I do. Show it down. Who, who ain't got an EBT? Let me give y'all somebody an EBT card. Go swipe that shit at Kroger and sit on their catch your ass before you get out of there. Maybe some man in a helicopter. You know, anything they want, they can catch these folks. Don't let nobody play you like you stupid. How the hell you got all of them looking like it ain't hard to catch them folks coming on. Are you serious? Man, let me tell you something. Y'all here playing around. These folks got shit, they fly. They can see through your whole house. Let me tell you, they've been sitting tonight. Let me tell you something. When you cooking that shit up, do y'all not know they got a plane in the air that can see you cooking that shit in your house? Okay. Keep being stupid. You ain't got to open no one to close your blind. See straight through your damn house. They pick that shit up. They know how high you got to cook to have that shit. Listen, hydroponics, all that shit, easy to catch all of it. From your water running, all that shit you playing with them lights. The people on every sister, they know your meat. you have a meter to your house. Okay? Even when you start playing off the grid shit, a lot of these folks not that smart. They try stuff. They not that smart. All them, you watch too much damn TV, okay? I'm from the street. Leave the damn TV alone, okay? These folks own everything you're gonna run. That damn meter spinning. Your water, that's how they keep no track. They know how much you use on the average. These people ain't stupid. Them folks ain't how they already know what the average run. That shit, your shit supersede. These folks ain't stupid, they already own your ass. How people too stupid? I always think they come up so smart. Now it's a damn hydroplane. Cut them down like get your ass off and down before you get everybody locked up. <laughs> but it just, you just got to educate our people and realize there are other things we can do to be more successful. And listen, marijuana, I don't have a problem. I'm not a marijuana smoker myself. But to each his own. Now, I did feel, oh, marijuana people wrong with it. How the hell are they been? And the folks drinking, it's just the worst. Look, it kill more people than anybody. From DUI to cirrhosis of the liver, to other things that cause effect, break up marriages. Before they gave up crack cocaine, a lot of our marriages were broke up from alcohol. Come on, man, before we got drugs, they had us with alcohol. Now they had prohibition. They put that shit here and broke our homes up. A lot of them, man, all that stuff, model, you were Christian. That's all you did. You learned to take beer. People drink a beer, they won't get drunk. They put the look inside the beer. So anything you get, they learn how to take you down. They had you smoking, got you the damn, got you the tobacco, and they start infecting the tobacco. Tobacco, it plant, it naturally comes from the ground. It couldn't possibly do what they do. That's folks right. were smoking damn cigarettes, smoking tobacco, no filter. That's right. Why them folks didn't get canceled? Them That's folks right. should have been died. That's right. Man, you, hell, you were rolling the damn thing just straight, no tobacco. No, they, they know I ain't lying in it. That's right. I didn't know what no filter was. They put them, what, them put them filters in there because anything they crack, their own people get hooked on. Like the fit now, it ain't us, it's them. That's right. Crystal milk. They ass get yep. wearing them out because they gave us crack. They know what they did to our community. We still can't, re we can't recover them community now. I, man, I grow them in Kirkwood, all the area. You can't ever fix that shit. They don't burnt down. They don't burnt the, just burnt the hole in people, man. Folk don't even exist no more. Man, they found I grew up, I grew up Cannon Road, Glenwood, all of him, all them folk missing. I, grew, I can't find none. Everybody ass missing. I'm telling you, man, these folk are kidding out people off the street. There people missing. They're the same thing that, let me tell you something, when they had these riots, y'all don't even know, they kidnapped people. They kidnapped, y'all see them before they'll be standing, they had that line, somebody walk up to them, they open that thing, snap their ass through the line, just close it back up. You don't see them no more, they gone. When they had that riot in the King's Head, 3,500 people never showed back up. Did y'all know they had that many people missing? What's about 18, 3,500 people? How many y'all didn't hear about that? That riot in the King's oh, them people missing. Them people ain't never been found. Nobody talking about that, we talking about riot in the King. We were talking about Rodney King, them dirty police officers. 
That's all we talked about. Nobody, did y'all know them people were never found? They don't have no paperwork on them people. Y'all don't think that's amazing? They lock up 3,500 people and 3,500 people ain't show back up. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. Because that's how they get your mind off. The whole march was about Rodney King. Rodney King getting beat, then justice of Rodney King. White people always been doing that. That's why you need your own system. Yeah. 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 You need a system based off fairness. I tell you, too, people need to police people that look like people. Chinese people need Chinese people now because I see Chinese people. Chinese people can't see each other because they got the slit, how their eyes. I mean, it ain't been funny. Their eyes can't come all the way. So they're going to be fair with each other. They're going to be with me. I can see them. Okay. We're going to act like they got big open eyes like us. They don't. They're going to see each other different. Well, <laughs> I remember a good white friend just with him one time. He was riding down the street with a Chinese guy. He said the guy started laughing. He said he went through three red lights. He, he said he laughed. The eyes closed. He said the whole slit just closed up. And my good white friend Justin told me that. See, me, I'm different like that. I see everybody. Hell, I see the same way he said. People crazy. <laughs> But I'm just saying, people need to start getting people to look like people program so we can treat each other fair. We need to get, it's a problem, bring somebody black and say, man, what the hell are you doing? But put yourself, come on, what the hell are you doing? We doing? You need to have black, we understand what you're doing, and talk black. We need white folks to talk white. How the hell are you, Billy Bob? You know what I'm saying? Everybody handle each other so we start just learning how to be fair with each other. Let the Mexicans talk to each other and they play that old music. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. I want to live that shit to save my life. I like, man, please change the beat. It's just terrible. <laughs> but you know when they want to rap, they always want to sound like us. Yep. They don't want to talk. Don't want to talk. Any, any Chinese rapper, they don't want to talk like that. They say, you don't want to talk like Bruce Lee, do you? Nope. You want to fight Bruce Lee, like, fight like Bruce Lee, you want to talk like me. That's right. That's right. Y'all know, it's hard to beat a rapper. Yes, sir. Man, we sang a little song. Now, they had that white boy, Michael Bow. Now, he sung a little bit. You tell you he had some nigga in it. Michael Ball. I'm telling you, Michael McDonald had a little nigga in him too now. Michael McDonald stole us a little bit too. Phil Collins went bad. Phil Collins had a little nigga in him too. Ain't that right? Dolly Parton. Damn, she had some titties. In the 70s. In the 70s. It was known fact then. In the 70s. That, in the 70s, then. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody had no titties. They already talked about with Dolly Parton titties. Man, folks want to go to Dolly World before she even put it in Tennessee. <laughs> Isn't that right? But you said how they faked us out. They put in our mind. She had the biggest titties around. She ain't had nothing. Y'all, see, a lot of y'all young, but seriously, how, who remember that, though? Seriously, they did. They played her. They had her, man. They like, oh, Dolly Parton titties. Oh, worldwide titties. Man, she had regular old white titties. And we just blowed our mind. White folk blowed it up. Gave her a little low-cut blouse that made it look like her titties were bigger. Everybody had titties. Man, you just sucked her titties hard. One time, you pulled her back out. It wasn't no, wasn't nothing special about her titty with all that noise was. They just made noise. I'm just being they created a phenomenon. Who remember? Huh? They all come making this up. You don't remember that? Now, Kelly, you talk about Dolly Parton titty. Hey, don't you remember that? Y'all ain't had no TVs in South Carolina. It was a white lady named Dolly Parton in the 70s and 80s. Carol, you remember they used to talk about her titty though? They like her titty, the biggest titty you ever seen, didn't it? They man, I'm saying, but you see, look at her. If you look, her titty ain't no different no other, no other woman titty. They played her. See, I'm just telling you, I'm telling y'all that. I know it's funny, too. Just telling you, in the 70s and the 80s, they always talking about, they'll have a little set that right? Little titty talking about, Dolly Parton titty, Dolly Parton titty. Like, these were like the most spectacular titties you ever seen. It was just a titty. You know what I'm saying? But she wasn't, they kind of blowed them up. But you go look at her, she got a regular little titty. It wasn't that to it. Stuck a pin it. Man, right there, you'd call her a little boy. You'd call her a dolly boy. Then there wasn't a whole lot to it. But see, they, they create all of Farrah Fawcett was the most beautiful woman. Yeah. See, a lot of y'all young, y'all remember Farrah Fawcett. Man, God, what you feel saying? She wasn't beautiful. Farrah Fawcett. Put a check by your name, you greatly huh? <laughs> Back then, them folks, you remember how you talk about Farrah Fawcett and Uncle Ted? You remember that? Yeah, they were Charlie Angel. She made Charlie Angel back then. Yeah, the blonde hair, fair, you know, Lee Major married back then. And back then, see, they created everybody that was white, that looked beautiful, and they made you look at them. Farrah Fawcett was like the most beautiful woman on the world back then. That's how they do it. Too. They'll give you everybody they want you to love, everybody they want you to hate. They give them to you. You don't really have no real opinion of your own about that. I told you, Thelma on Good Time, she was beautiful. But you know what? Look, every time, J.J. Ollie kept talking, Good God, that battle with your ugly face. 
And you know what? I really never looked at her as pretty like that for a long. Because every time he would talk, he would tell me how ugly she was. Ugly, but you just, I didn't really focus on her because his comment was always about how ugly she was. What do y'all think that whole, what y'all think that whole phenomenon was about? Keeping black guys from liking black women and you will focus on Ferris Fawcett and, and Dolly Parton, regular size titty. Okay, it is funny, but it worked. Let me tell you something. Had Thelma made a poster back then like Farrah Fawson, it I sold it. Yes, sir. She was beautiful, yeah, right. natural beautiful, yes, natural sir. beautiful girl. Yes, sir. Just a natural beautiful girl, had that little pretty little mole. Yes, but listen, but think about the writers. Who wrote that? The, so why would I write, here's the beautiful black girl, every time she, her brother constantly keeps telling how ugly her face is. And he was ugly shit himself now. He wasn't in no position to talk about nobody, even to this very hour. But think about it. But this is the thing you got. Think about that now. They had JJ like he was a sex symbol. Yep. His ribs showing, yep. ass back, he got scoliosis, dying on my eyes. And made like he was the, look how, but just to show you that white people create your comedy, they create your love, your hate, your fear. This girl was beautiful. And yet, he called her ugly, and he was the one getting all the women. Yep. And none of his women look better than Thelma. She could hardly get a date. Yep, that's right. That's right. They, they, during that time she was out, you had Farrell Fawcett, you had all three of them Charlie Angel. You had other white women out. They couldn't afford for white men, black men, to look at black women in that type of era or in that type of light. In years back, they had Diane Carroll and other black We had a lot of that. A lot of them, Lola for long, we had plenty. But you know, they kind of played them back and they kind of had them out where you wouldn't really, you wouldn't know that they were pretty, but you wouldn't notice it to the extreme they were with a white woman. Yeah. They put music behind her ass when she walked. Yeah. They make her hell and shit, blow all that. That woman gonna be doing, she'll be pretty with her ass struggling to do yeah. stuff, and other little struggle. Yeah. So you get caught up on other things, you never see her for her beauty. True. True. Okay, I'm trying to help y'all out, man. Y'all had no, y'all had no, ugly ass sitting in Portier. Damn me, well, they like, he was about the best thing we had, a smart. We had plenty of folk when Christmas burnt up like that. But that's who they gave. Now, we had Billy D. Williams. Yeah, they ain't let a lot. Y'all look back then, they, had, they ain't let no black men, no, you ain't had no black men on TV look like, look worth nothing back then. You couldn't. That's that how about much they going to do. I mean, you really just didn't give them no good looking because they want, think about it. it one, just going to be women of color, they're going to look and say you good looking. White women going to say it. So you had to put these guys like where this night. That's a direct attempt to mess up every black man. I'm so tired of this ass fight. Why don't you just be a pre, do something, do, be a cab driver. Isn't that right? I'm so tired of this ass kicking folks and fighting folks. I just don't like his fight. Man, I don't like it. I just don't like where it's a Just stop fighting folks. Do something with your life. Go work with the Red Cross or something. How many of y'all like Wesley Snipe as an actor? Okay, that's good, all right? Y'all sick. <laughs> Is it? He doing the same thing every show. He know who? That Nino, that Nino now, that different. Nino was different. But after that, we lost him. Yeah, he can't kick everybody all the time. Now, Nino was, now, Nino, that, 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 was, a, that was a cheap little movie. And then you didn't realize how cheap it was you see it. Now you're like, damn, it was a cheap movie. Yeah, right? Like they could have spent no more than $35 to make it. You know what I'm saying? It was so bad. You know? but, look, but after that, I, I'm just tired of West Knight fighting for. I don't, if he do something else, who? Mo I, I didn't watch. I want a Spike Lee fan. When I watched, she got to have it. That damn thing, I was so lost. When I, when I seen that movie, I said, the hell I came to see. They this, my partner, they this girl, she was all in that black power shit. And she said, oh, we're going to go see the new movie. Like, we went to see it. Hell, I'm looking for like laughter or killing. I seen that shit, I said, damn, we see the fan. I was saying, the fan, now the fan was good. Now that's two of them he got, the fan was his probably best. Then he had another one, he shot them folks at the phone booth. That's a good one. Y'all need to see that one. Where the snipe, what's that one on? Look it up, what is Slither. What you call it? No, Patterson, no, hell no. He had a headache on that plane. And I had one too from watching his ass. No, it's another one y'all need to see with Wes Snipe. He was on, I, I didn't need Wes Snipe to tell about white men jumping. White men can't jump, they jump over, how the hell they can't jump when they jump, they went past us. 
Man, hell, all the nigga can't jump. We ain't went nowhere. We ain't made no leaps and bounds yet. So now, there was a movie he had. He was uh, Liberty Stand. Liberty Stand Stick. Y'all ain't, ain't seen that one? Look at that. That's a bad one. To me, that's a bad one. I ain't no karate shit in now. <laughs> Look at that one. That's a good one. That's that. To me, that's a bad movie right there. That one, the fan was pretty good. But that called Robert De Niro's in there. I like Robert De Niro. Damn, but it's just the way he talked to you before he kill you. You know what I'm saying? Talk to a man right him Now, gangster, you ain't got no better than to be on the planet, let me see. De Niro and Pacino. And they got the fight. I couldn't help neither one of them. I just be on it. Like, Get him off him. I said, shit, I be on it. I like him too. I was just like, y'all just keep rolling on top of each other. You know what I'm saying? Because it just, I, them a boy right there. I like them. Earl who? I said Al Pacino. No, Joe Pesci. I like Joe Pesci. He the bad look. He the little bad look mean. That's Joe Pesci and the White. Them two need to make a movie together. <laughs> angry ass white man. Angry ass nigga. I mean, bro, I don't be killing up folk from the show. Damn thing ain't come on. They just killing up folk that mean laugh. So y'all need man. When Joe Pesci, now nah, he, now nah, he good. But you know they will never get him no starring role. He always gonna be one of them second lead man. He must got some nigga in him. Cause you the white man gonna have something. So y'all look at that liberty stand still now. Y'all make that one of y'all homework. Y'all look at that to help, help you live a little better. So you know what to do. You ever get up and see somebody in the phone booth. Is that the phone booth? No, that's another one, the phone booth. That was a hot dog stand. Yeah, go ahead and look at it. it ain't going to hurt you. Anyway, we're going to move forward now and try to go. So hopefully we educated y'all so y'all get a little smarter. And we try to put something back to try to help our people be better people. Don't y'all want to be better people? Yes, sir. As a whole. I'm trying to tell you. I seen the uh, brother I was going to speak to him. He wasn't speak to me. He spoke to the white folk. I started to stop him before he left. I said, oh, yeah, by the way, damn you, and keep moving. Because they weren't studying. I was trying to speak. I want to say, you know, just you know, speak to my brother. How you doing, brother? You know, just let a person know. We got we to gotta start that. Y'all told y'all that. Man, we got to empower each other. That, that mean a lot. He didn't want to speak to me. He was speaking his ass out. The white folk, look at he did. He didn't look at me, walked on. I said, oh. Mm. He was fairly stumped or something. I probably kicked him in the back or something like that. Carried the bus. Like, why you don't want to think of to speak to your own people? Right. Ain't that right? I ain't, I ain't against speaking to nobody. I speak to everybody. But I definitely ought to want to speak to your own people. Yes, sir. Ain't that right? We gotta, I'm telling y'all, we got to create that. If it's not there, let's create it. Right. You know, sometimes people say, like, they'll say relationship. Women do that shit. You know, the love ain't there. Well, hell, create it. That's right. They do it when they watch TV. Yep. They ask, fall in love them folk, don't give a damn about them, don't know them. Man. Women are women. They... That's why I don't like a lot of shit. I, I, kinda look, I like look, I'm going to look, look through her hips and see what she be watching. <laughs> Women ass switch up. I'm going to get rid of that damn Amazon stick. Might be watching no crazy shit. I told her I don't like all black folks on my movie. If it do, it used to be Tyler Perry shit or Oprah and the man be soft as hell. I don't want, don't watch never no man soft as hell. Then she come with me, why well, it be sensitive? <laughs> that ain't me. Ain't that right? They be trying to make us all, you know what I'm saying, make us like a damn cat. All that purring and shit. I ain't got time to be purring. I'm a man. Right. Say what you want. I ain't got time for all that. Yeah. Ain't that right? The whole be romantic. For where the hell we going to the same place? Ain't that right? All we trying to do is get the climax, get through. What we going to do? Now, you waste all that time. Oh, y'all don't like the truth, huh? Ain't nobody create all that stuff, white folk. Come in here, women want all that extra stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with you know what I'm saying. Doing that. Don't try to watch. Don't bring that TV shit. Don't like. Don't bring all that TV stuff to me. Be on watch some old damn love story. Once you go so on top of no building. Hell no. Nah. I ain't want to be on slip down there and fail. No. Ain't that right? I ain't got time for all that stuff. Ain't that right? Just learn to just love each other. You ain't got to do all that stuff. I don't need her to go all on top of no roof and shit like that. We sit right here. What you want? I don't want to talk. All right, start talking. It don't work like that. We got, what the hell is on? We talking now? What you want to say? <laughs> I ain't got to go all that. I ain't got to take you nowhere to tell you nothing. I can tell you right here. Let's <laughs> go somewhere and talk. What's wrong with right here? Oh, they don't, they don't like that. Drive up all that gas. Hell, I don't know. I ride out somewhere at 259. Joe Biden done got it before 39 by the time. Let's talk right here where I can afford it. Let me tell you how to do it, women. Don't over expect stuff from TV. T y'all, I'm telling y'all, black relationship. Y'all, I know I say I'm kind of funny somewhat. But in reality, though, TV hurt our relationship. It is, man. Thank you. It got to be talking every three seconds. 
I just want to rest. I just want to sit here and look. Then she be laughing at looking at me. I be looking at her be like, what's wrong with you, nigga? Nothing, just, like, what the hell you just standing at me for? That's some serial killer shit. You need to say something. I don't be like nobody just laying there staring at me. The hell is this? Why well, I told you, you sleep out, look at you. I said, next time I have my damn gun in the bed then. We can't have all that. Be standing at me while I'm asleep. What you got? Because them TV shows, I'm telling you, them TV shows mess them up. They be looking, damn night come out. You're say, ching, ching, they get that music. All right. Let me tell you, how many of y'all believe? Listen, these shows, y'all don't know how to believe me. You have to monitor women and what shows they watch. You got to watch them shows. I'm telling you, them TV shows will create, it makes a reality for them. It'll create the emotion. They'll be pissed with you. You don't know what done happened. Some shit done seen on TV. Some dude done cheated on his old lady. Your ass can't, you trying to, your damn plate get thrown across the table. You trying to figure out, what the hell done happened? You don't know what going on. There's some shit off TV. Or you ain't even got no dinner. They favorite um, girl on the show done got pissed off or something, and you finna get the bad fight for it. You gotta watch that. I watch TV. I leave TV right there. Women, women can't watch TV and do them. They, they, it, it be one of them strange things. With it. I, I'm trying to help y'all out now. So then y'all married, make sure y'all watch. Y'all date, just uh, say, say, send me your, let me get your pad to see what kind of shit you be watching. I just wanna know, I ain't got time to be fighting no TV. You can't win. At, how many of y'all women, TV kind of shape your emotion? Tell the truth. Wine, Prince, Smith, raise your hand. That, 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 we didn't believe that she the only one. I'm telling you, y'all sit right, you won't even know why they be pissed. Go back through that talk, that law, and watch what they've been watching. Yeah, right. I'm trying, you're an angry woman with a diary of an angry black woman. The hell I want to read it for. I thought diary report to be secret. You don't need to be reading. I ain't reading it. You don't need to read it either. I'm telling you, this Tyler Perry is against men. Yeah. All right, now I'm messing around. Tyler Perry not for women standing with no men. He for that woman hating that man breaking out so he can try to get him. Yep. Yep. Now, quiet as it kept now, I'm about to say Mark Chetnett about going to be gay. He keep popping up to the movie. I'm telling you, Tyler Perry, I'm saying, Tyler, what you trying to say? And hell no, they ain't take off my shirt. What you trying to keep making these moves for? Black like, man, what you writing all these plays about taking off shit? Won't you write something with a man clothes on a man being a man? Because he don't know how to be a man. So he'll come in and he'll wreck this whole thing. Who put that shit gone? Them black, all them black women had that gone with the wind. What the one they had? He might have had all Whitney Houston. Same damn thing. Gone with the wind. That ain't nothing but the black version of gone with the wind. Waiting in here. Wasn't that about hating a man? Yep. See that? Who wrote that? Oprah? Jeff who? Kerry Man Mandela? Kerry McMillan. Terry? Uh, see that? I know somebody I hate. Where she at now? Candy Liquor. <laughs> Listen, I don't watch show gay people write and create because I know you against people that's straight. I'm telling y'all, all right. What about burn up a man's shit? How you set about burning a man? That man got to buy some more clothes. So all that kind of stuff, you start, I'm telling you, you'll create them bad behavior women, and you get them women being them group like that. No, get them out that group. Get all that clucking. Get them out them group. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Them groups, them groups will hurt them. They get them group, it's always a poison one who can't get no man, and she'll be feeding there too. Why well, we need a man? But man ain't shit, man. Talking about how you got him? From a man. You can't get them telling. Them women hating group. They'll, they'll formulate from that. Yeah, read them book. I like Hillary. I need to control what you read and what you watch. Y'all, all right. Y'all mess around. Y'all be surprised. Women read them old book. Them old love story. But get that shit throw it right in the trash. That's not your story. Just throw it in the trash. Cause that, that shit just, just clutter your mind and you start thinking. Then your ad think you that character. Ad be creeping around through the house and shit. No, you be all right. Throw it in the trash. <laughs> See that? I watch my mama cry ass off her little house in the period. I know what TV do to women. <laughs> And she would get so pissed at my daddy, man, that thing. Oh, he watched, he'll sit there, he'll look, she'll sit in front of that TV. She won't sit at that tear just cry. He'll say, he'll look around at her. He'll look at her, he said, that nigga crazy. <laughs> he said, the nigga watching TV, he said, the nigga crying, looking at TV. She'd be so pissed. Oh. Anytime Laura started crying or Laura come back, her ass, she just said, just start that crying. My dad said, 
The nigga crazy. <laughs> so she's sitting here looking at TV just crying. See, a lot of that stuff, I'm telling y'all, TV, man, y'all be surprised. It'll shape your emotion. So, I, so now you got to ask yourself, what kind of shows do they create for you? Yeah. I th what movie? Tell me a show they created that was positive toward us. Let's, I know you're going to holler. Cosby Show. Was it practical? During the ages when we saw it, was it practical? Black doctor, black lawyer married. Typically going to be one or the other. And that's going to be far few in between. Now we can say the imagery of what he was trying to put, put out a positive uh, uh, energy to our people to try to get. But the people you were reaching weren't there. Y'all got what I'm saying? The people you were trying to reach. That's what I'm saying. We got to get people to reach out people from different ends of the spectrum of where we are. Understand where we at. If you're going to try to come and correct us or you're going to come and criticize us, you need to understand where I'm at. And then you need to be able to give me an alternative. Just like with relationships on how we got to do things, sitting down having real talk as a people, sitting down having real conversation in relationships. It, it needs to be done. Pure, you need to talk. Because where you at when you first started dating and early married, things change because obligation change. You get kids, other bills inclined, you move from an apartment to a house or downsize or upside. All this start to change your relationship because it's more responsibility. There's no way to take on other responsibilities or even ailments in your life and it does not affect you as a person. And sometimes it will affect your relationship. Then the first part comes, what happened to you? You changed. Shit, I'm constantly working, trying to pay for all this shit you keep getting. Yeah. At first you used to be so in love with me and now it's like, I'm like, want your ass dead? I'm thinking all that too, all these bills, I'm just saying. We won't go to that extreme, but you got to understand when you start putting things inside a relationship, it starts to change the relationship. It starts to change the attention you get. It starts to change the response you'll get. And these are things that people really need to think about. Like people say, I want to get a bigger house. I want to get a new car. I want to get it. Okay, to get that, we're going to increase our debt load, meaning we're going to have to do what? Work. Increase our workload. So what are we going to do about that time you want? Yeah, no precious moments. I don't want a whole lot. The hell you don't. I'm constantly buying. Because you'll watch TV or you'll get with a group and your group will get something and then you're going to put this on me and now I'm an underperforming man if I don't get you something new to keep up with what you saw. Right, right. Now let me say that this ain't in every case. But I'm just telling y'all what hurts us. Now if you think about this, we become more of an unattached people in relationship with our kid because now we live in better than we ever live. I mean, we, we live better. We're driving better. Our parents didn't drive Mercedes and BMWs. And they didn't they even think about cars like that. They just got a car. It's a car. They might have bought a new car, but it was a, it was a, a family-type car. Now we get shit. We'll get a sports car and be married here, kid. That's just some on the side. Our parents couldn't afford to buy a sports car and a family car, and then her car, it'd be one car, maybe two. We went from one car, that was enough for a family. Then you went to two cars, then we got three cars and four cars, we got all, and now it just changed what we do because you can go either type of way and it changed our relationship. We have to learn how to become back to become, learn how to get quality time with each other and learn how to appreciate things. Um, I want to say learn how to appreciate each other without things. Sit down, let's just give each other each other without giving each other things. A woman said, well, I like my wife, she loved them flowers. I always got some flowers. And I look at that, I said, hell, it's going to die. I sent them down the road to fold it up. I said, going straight to the trash. I'm old school. Leave them the ground. Let me bring you some collard greens. Sit them in some water. Cut them down, thing, let them eat them. Leave we shit later, we good. We ain't getting none out of them flowers. But they just like to look at me, get them. They feel like the flowers just mean you think me. I'm thinking about your ass now. I ain't got to buy no flowers to think about your ass. I'm thinking about you now. Ain't that right? Think you need to get in there and cook. Think you need to leave me alone. Ain't <laughs> that right? Think about sex. I'm always thinking about you. I don't need no flowers to think about you. But y'all had to have stuff like that. Flowers don't, I mean, this is what we look at. People don't feel like you appreciate them unless you're giving them something. And that, I think that takes away us just learning to appreciate each other. Like, like let's lay down, just lay your ass right here. So, oh, I want you to lay on my damn shoulder gonna go numb. I ain't the man, this, my shoulder numb, your head heavy as hell. How long are we gonna do this? Let's do this for about two minutes. Let's stop. My arm going numb. Oh, no, nobody be practical. You want to be on love, but shit numb. They got to amputate this thing. Because ain't no blood getting through there. See, y'all don't want to be real, do you? Ain't no brother that went through this. Raise your hand. Come on, tell the truth. 
They want that. They, you know, you try to hold on, trying to go. You're like, damn, you're here, here. I don't want to move. You trying to ease a little bit, and then she get like, what wrong? You're like, damn. Now you're gonna like it's a problem. Now it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? You're like, damn, you're here, here. You right here on somewhere cutting the circulation off. You know what I'm saying? I'm damn thinking about losing his arm now. I don't want me no quadriplegic. You know what I'm saying? Come on, just move your head. But then, folks, like, you just got to do something. You got to bring me something. That means you love me. You got to keep giving. I'm, how do we get to this point that people got to give us things to mean that they care about us? I'm not saying, I'm not against giving things to, you know, women or whatever. But how about if we just learn to appreciate each other without things? So what happened to you in a relationship when you get in a situation you can't afford those things? So that means I stopped loving you. Because a lot of times we do. He love me, you'll bring me something. That's that TV shit. I, I move every TV out of this damn thing. I, I, let me tell you what I do. I throw these damn TV away, I bring coloring books. <laughs> Isn't that right? I get some of that damn color, but I put them on the wall. Go, get your ass up there and draw something. We ain't, something ain't gonna cause no confusion. Y'all don't like that, do it? Somebody try to talk. We just gotta fix it. We gotta learn how to communicate. That's why we hurt. We don't talk. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna get them out. Of, I'm gonna get through. Typically, the the relationships we have, they all meet white marriage. Yeah, true. We we don't have a real relationship because we don't have a, like every other culture or have a way they do things. We typically mimic them. We don't really have a way we did. It was people that learned and had relationships and appreciate each other without things. It is. Now, it, things mean you love them. You got to buy them something. Hell, Valentine, you got to give them a tennis bracelet. The only thing is, ass can't play tennis. You know what I'm saying? I remember a tennis bracelet was so hot one year, man, I had to go get a tennis bracelet. Ass don't even play tennis. What you doing with a tennis bracelet? It's all this stuff. They're like, hell, go get me a football here, man. I don't play football. It's crazy. Just stop it. Just stop it. Quit making the relationship about things. Let's make it about appreciating one another. And a lot of times you'll put so much pressure on a person now to, you know, to get them to make this character that you want because you watch TV and you formulate a character. I never try to make my wife formulate no character from TV. That's them. That's TV. I leave TV where TV at. I watch TV with intelligence and realize that's there. Now, won't you be this TV? What? No, I'm not looking for that. I'm watching, this is TV. I know what TV formulated to do. I learned how to use TV without TV using me. That's right. Yeah. A lot of time what we do, we watch TV and move it, and before you know it, they control you. I'm going to try to be like that character. I'm going to try to be, you're trying to get something. First of all, you don't even see them watch that. They get it cut on, better put soap on their eye, and they dress in three seconds. Your ass can't get dressed in three seconds. You know, we're going to smell your mustache. Get out of there, they don't bread the tea. Get right to bed. Put on the clothes, drawers already and walk out, no t-shirt and button, and go in a, jump in a car and shit, gas in, ain't with no gas station. Use your senses. You can't ride no damn week and no, on no show. I ain't never seen you go to no gas station. And I'm in 4,000 miles with no gas station. Just stop it. See, they, just, they check you this stuff. They try to see if you're intelligent. And now you done fail for it because some stuff, I, I got to show out why now, secret and lie. It's so much shit ain't practical, but I, I got that though. I got it. You can't, you can't, you can't let it get you because TV will pull you in. Shit not practical. Let me tell you something. We ain't gonna help. Ain't no one nigga finna whoop me and five of my friend ass. Okay? We not stand around let you whoop our ass one at a time. And you should be tired. Fight though. You typically last couple of sec, twenty some second. Your ass ain't golly. This is all TV. White folk is you whoop this shit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Take your gun. Whoop, throw this shit. Then the gun on the ground. And I don't even want to throw my ass on the ground right beside my gun. I don't want the gun. I want to get back and fight your ass. Stay right there, bitch, man. Bad move. Hell, I'm trying to get You just whoop my ass, throw me in the ground by my gun. Why am I getting back up to fight you? Right. I'll write a movie. Everybody get killed as soon as it come on. And put a car to talk. They're practical. I'm a fighter. I got a gun. Brrr, don't spray the money, got it, it's her gun, got a gun, Brrr, a nice ass gun, throw it down the road, hell no, I'm setting this shit in the hood, put it, I ain't throwing it on, I'm gonna get some more bullets, what, I, I can run across somebody, what the hell are they throwing with these nice ass gun? nine glock, just throwing, pow, just run, who does this, y'all ain't heard of pistol whipping, I don't know what, I'd I be so frustrated Sunday morning. Who throw away all these damn nice ass guns? I just like to go behind. I like to have more like that. I be in there coming, just pick all these guns up. <laughs> just put them in a wheelbarrow. 
Put on, hey, bro, roll that dead man, get it, and check that wallet, get that. Right. Hell no. If I'm shooting about, somebody got some money in their pocket. Right. Go in the, I'm a, I ain't worried about the police. I got time to check these pockets. Right. Let me go in these pockets. You might have some in your pocket I can use. Right. Folks, crazy. Some stuff, I just don't get it. I know, I said, you know what? They write them movies to piss me off. They know I'd be pissed when I watch them. All right, we got to get ready to go. How many of y'all think I got a problem? That tight. We'll be watching you. All right, come on, give it a sound to Cartos Bro. Let me talk with y'all a little bit. Y'all off the chain. Listen, we're going to uh, <clears throat> Roman 15 and 4. We use that for our base. Always. But we like to, first of all, make sure when we look at the book, we understand the fundamentals. You know exactly what the book is there for. Okay? I said, I'm not one of those people just believe in nobody shoving no book in my face and just tell me to start reading and start going to believe it. So I need to understand, first of all, the premise, the basis of what you're trying to do. I need to understand what the purpose of it is. <clears throat> I need to know how to properly use the book. Y'all got it? And that's only because it's critical. All right? It's critical to know how it works. Let's see what happens. Listen, Romans 15 and 4. This program is called Beth, Beth Ha Mashiach, which is saying the house of the Mashiach, the house of the anointed one. So this is one of the programs we use instead of the King James Perversion. The King James Perversion is not old enough to be an accurate writing. It's about 1602, 1611, supposedly publication out. And, <clears throat> and we understand what the agenda was. Anytime these people are taking our book, our writing, they've always had an agenda. And it's important for us to understand when you're reading <clears throat> that you don't just feel so lax, that you don't um, keep on a um, uh, sense of awareness. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not taking my drawers off when I'm reading. I need to keep a sense of awareness. This is your salvation. This is the most precious thing that you're going to let somebody into your soul. This, this, this gets a man. So, y'all know how many women been manipulated and slept with their pastor? Because of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how many kids been slept with in churches with preachers because of the Bible? That's right. Keep your drawers on and open your minds, people. I need you to think. Listen, nobody's been more manipulated. Listen, okay. Let's go with mind altering drugs. What mind altering drug has altered more people than the Bible? What drug was out when we got brought from Africa? The Bible was. That's right. So that's why you can't afford to sit somewhere and not become conscious. You need to know how a person thinks. You need to know what a person ideology is because uh, that affects how a person look at it. Anybody, you can't take just anybody and say, look at this and I want your honest opinion when you're not even honest yourself. So I need to know where you're at. I need to know how you look at this. What's your, what's your plan? What you trying to do? And you need to know that. You don't need to drop your guard with nobody, me and nobody else. Because cause a person say a couple of cute, cute words or whatever, that does not mean you drop your awareness. This is your salvation, and you need to be mindful of it. So I need to look, I need to know when you look at this, I need to know what you see, and I need to be <laughs> conscious enough to see for myself, does it make sense to me? Okay? This is your salvation. People can have an opinion about it. At the end of the day, this is your soul. Y'all got it? Sir. Sure. All right, let's say, listen. For whatever Nika taught before. So this, now you just told me, <laughs> listen, for whatever was written before. What is whatever? Anything. And whatever was written. That means everything was written. What was it written for? Nikatab to Lamedus. The Nik is mean for written. That's the Aubrey word for written. And it was written to teach us. The teach is Lamed. The Lamed means to instruct, to teach, and to show us. So I'm looking, when I'm looking in the, when I start to look in the word, I'm trying to make sure, I'm trying to look at what do I see? Y'all got I'm trying to get direction. So when you're looking at the book, that's the perfect verse. I'm trying to, I'm just trying to find a, a Bible verse called before we pray, before we eat. My mom always said, you put a quote a Bible verse. So the whole, he didn't tell Yes, sir.
My enemy. I saw my enemy did that. He said it wasn't him. What did he just tell y'all that he didn't tell y'all that he told you? He my enemy. I didn't have to call his name. He know who he is. But in the day, again, you want to know why you're doing something. You don't want to just follow something because this is what you're supposed to do and people tell you. You want to know why. You got it? You want to know why. You want to make sure if that's what it's for, then that's what you want to make sure you're getting. If it, you should see something. You should be learning something. You should be instructed in something. You got it. So I need to know the validity of it. He's saying whatever was written before. Now, there are people that took your writings, your original writings, and they transgendered them. They'll call it translated. Because I know whatever was written before, if you learn that, it was written to teach you. So they'll come in and they'll interfere and put misinformation, disinformation in it. Why y'all think, listen, religion is one of the biggest arguments you ever have. Religion and politics. Politics is really not that hard to argue. When it comes down to religion, it is. Because everybody got a different way of how they see it. Everybody. You come down to what's right, people don't want to get to the fundamentals of what's been stated, what was, what was actual, what's factual. So then you get people that got their creativity and they'll start to formulate something they can't prove happened or was here, and that becomes their doctrine. So when people feel like it's something they can't do or don't, or some don't allow them to do something, then you create another religion. The, the first Christian religion these people would have probably had would have been, what, probably um, Christian. They had all these different little branches of Protestant broke off from the Catholicism. Catholicism. Catholicism is about their oldest and their biggest fundamental for Christianity, which is what they was when they came and they got us. And through this Christianity, through this whole um, phenomenon they created, this has been part of our downfall, even to this day. People of color want to realize that this has been your fault, even to this day. This has been the destructive of your home. This has been the hater of your men and the hater of our women. This has been the most disconnect from our kids. You ask yourself, how does a people that is that are as religious as we are have the most abortions? Right. Through Christianity. Because God understands. Thou shalt not kill, but when you got too many kids, God understands. You got to look at your bills and be practical. Is it would God want you to bring a child into the world that you can't afford to take care of? Then they see, they, they, they play with you. They play with your emotion. Your emotion, you want to please your maker. You've done that since slavery. If it pleases your maker, what you think a player trying to please? The coach. He want coach to say, good, that's how you do it. He want to please coach. He always want to please his maker, his keeper, his trainer. That's what he want to do when he was in the field. He want to outwork the other niggas so the master look at him and say, the rest of the niggas need to be like him. He wants to say, he never looked at how to please himself. Being satisfied with self is that, that's a hard thing for people of color. Really, it is. We, it's real. We'll do stuff and kind of, I'm satisfied. You can tell it's hurt. You're really not satisfied. That's not what you want to do. I, I, I made this uh, thing for me. You can't do everything you want to do, but you should at the most be able to be satisfied with yourself. What, what good is this going to do if I'm not satisfied with myself? The real, the, uh, realistically, or uh, you know, just really looking at it, you need to sit down and look at yourself. Wh where are you at? What does it take to satisfy you? What, what is it that you need? People know that from a job. They go and say, you want a job? What's well, so up, I'm paying $4 an hour. What you gonna say? I'm, I take it. You're gonna say, I can't use it. Why not? You said money, say it ain't gonna work for me. Because of what? My bills, my obligation, because of things I want, I desire. You can figure that. You hear or you sit in a religious, some religious um, setting. What is it you're trying to do? What do you want? What does it take to satisfy you? What do you need? You need to know. You need to ask yourself those questions. You need to make sure, and you need to make sure you're on the path of doing it. If I'm not there, it need to be because I'm traveling toward it and I'm on my way to not. I'm not there and ain't even making an effort. I'm not even in the direction. That makes no sense. If I know what I need and what I want, then I need to be trying to move in that direction. Hello? Okay. When Abraham was told to get out from his father's house, what did he say he was going to do with him? Megan what? Was he there when he was in his father's house? Did he get there when he walked out the door? But he started moving that direction. Well, tell me what he wanted to do. What tell me the fact that he came and told me gonna, what he told me he was going to make. What's it? The only reason he went, because that's what he wanted. What he said, Shit, I wasn't really, was trying to be a loner. I really don't like people around me. I don't like people talking to me. I'm real funny, like I'm finicky. So what he came and offered had to be something he already looked at. That fits me. There'll be a person that establishes himself. That other people can come back and look to me. 
that I could be like the foundational of how things are set and people will mark and mimic me to follow. That I'll be the person that people say, I want to be a friend to Allahim like Abraham. This was a man of color. You don't look and you don't think in that aspect. You think this is outside of your ability. Why is it? Why is it outside of your ability? Hello? Wow. Cuff, who they called Peter, told him when he went to see Cornelius, he said he proceeded to Allahim with no respect. Of, what was that? For what does he do? That's tight. He saw to every nation. He saw how Allahim, how he's accepted with Allahim if he performs a certain type of attribute, if he has a behavior, if he keeps a certain action. He said, this man is accepted by Allahim. That's our whole goal. If Allahim not accepting you, it don't matter about other people in the first place. So my whole goal becomes, Tony has to be, I have to accept me. This has to be something I want, and I want him to accept me. That's why I'm him. So I got my basis when I'm reading, when I'm looking. I know what I'm looking for. I ain't got time to be like Shaul said, who they call Paul. I'm not one that beat at the air. You need to be satisfied with yourself. You're not. Change what you don't like. Why you just got to stay? Change what you don't like. Okay? So he told me that whatever was written before was written to teach, to show me, to instruct me, and direct me. Listen. So that through endurance. Going through without quitting. And through the Nakum of the Kitubim. Through the comfort of the writings. We might have Tikva. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. So we, we talked about this before in the seventh chapter of the book of Yehukanon, which is Yahuwah is gracious. We talked about how he talked about um, believing on him. And these are things that's been mandated. He that believeth on me, that Amon's on me as the Kitubim, the writings had said. This is the person, these are the people who he gives what we look for is the spirit of separation. They'll call it the Ruach HaKadosh. Well, we call it the Ruach HaKadosh. They'll call it the spirit. They'll call it the Holy Ghost. White right? people give it something. That means you could run into these pews and fall backwards. We ain't found nobody to do this yet. Run into walls and break their back, you know, because they got the Holy Ghost. You know, tell we fly, hit the floor, and then need ammonia under your nose. No, there's a spirit. He gives us a separation. Y'all got it? So he tells us to come out from among the world and be ye badal, which is be separate. So guess what this is that tell you to do that? The Ruach, because it's the word. In Yehukanah 6 and 63, they are called John. He said, what if you should see the Ben of Ish ascend up where it was before? He said, it's the Ruach that quickened it, which quickened means to give a light, right? The flesh, the basal, profit nothing. That the words I speak unto you, they are Ruach and they are Kai. So now we start looking at this is how we obtain the spirit and what they'll call the spirit. The wind, we'll refer to it as the wind because you look at it, the wind doesn't have a face, but it has attribute. The spirit does not have a face. It has attributes. Y'all got it? When they start to talk about the fruit of the Ruach is. So it doesn't have a face, but it has attributes. Y'all got it? When you can see an orange, you can see the, what you can see, the, the, the peel. You can see the you can see the the texture on the inside. You can do all of that. Can you see the vitamin C and the vitamin D? These are attributes. That's what we look at with the spirit. Got it? The spirit gives attributes. You don't see it. It has the attributes to it. Got it? So now when you see it pick up leaves and start to turn them, it shows you which way the wind going, doesn't it? You put one of them, I remember years ago, people put them little uh, them little weather things, them roosters, and you'll see that thing spinning. So you see where the wind was going. And you see which way the wind was turning, guess what it told you? Direction. It told you where it was coming from. That's right, it showed you direction. That's what we look for when we learn it. We're looking for direction. Y'all got it? Let's look at something right here. See if that the sixth chapter of the book of Husha, they'll call it Hosea. Six and four. Let's see what I want. Husha. And we're, and, and we're only looking at this again because we're trying to get direction. Let's do six and one since we're there right quick. I'll tell y'all one of them that ain't going to hurt you. I try not to be before y'all that long. <laughs> Something that won't hurt you. All right, listen. Come. Let us return to Yahuwah. Listen, return meaning what? You can't return to somewhere you ain't been. See, that's, something, that's a difference now. People said, let us go. Have you been there before? 
See, that's a difference in conversation. If we, if I say, he say, let us go, that doesn't mean we were there. Now he's saying return. So that's going to tell me we've been there before, simply if you said return. If you said, can you return me my phone? That means I have it. And it was yours before, and you want me to give it back to you. Now we need to come into the problem. Why was it taken? Why were you gone? See, these are questions typically you ain't going to ask because you just read. People just teach you to read, don't think. Look for something that's spiritual that gets you, spot, that sparks you to go into other things and looking for something that just kind of jump out at you. But if the man just told us, come, let us return to Why? Yahuwah. For he has torn us, but he shall heal us. See that? He separated us. He said, but he's going to heal us. Come on. He has wounded us. What happened? But he shall bandage us. See that? And they ain't saying gonna come and gonna bind us up. What happened? He shall revive us what after happened? two yamin. See that? After two yamin, after two days, he say gonna revive us. He shall comb us up on the third yum. See that? And the third yum, so he gonna get us up. And that's what we've been looking for. So the whole purpose of coming back, we were trying to get ourselves back. We we're trying to get ourselves back to a state of being. Y'all got it? So we look at with Yahushua. And we look at that as Yahuwah's salvation. And, and, and what we look at with him doing that, we look at what was important for us in those three days. Just like when Yahushua was put and he was, uh, when he came to us, he was trying to get us to a realization. And to get us to recognize Yahuwah, and I just taught y'all play, um, to get us, I guess, to a state, and I, and I can appreciate now, the fact that when he came to us, it was on a, on the level of the writings, but he lived a life with us and dealt with us with so much reasoning that it made sense and it was logical for us to do it. Y'all got it? Just like telling people, come and let us return. I mean, for some people, they good where they at. But he let us know he tore us away. We were torn. Y'all got it? He let us know he wounded us, but he has the ability to heal. I mean, what's going to get us to come back? We're looking for reconciliation. Just like when a person gets in a relationship, a man and woman, I've been in a relationship for, and y'all break up and y'all try to talk about getting back together. Who's going back if nothing changes? Let's just get back together. Why? I mean, let's just get back together. How much sense that made? We split up for what reason? The drug, whatever. Yeah, one working. But it could be, yeah, and, and on that working, how many matter things? What makes sense just get back together and get back together so we can just be together? That's the same thing here. Let's look at what happened. He said he has torn it, but he can heal us. Yeah, all right, he can repair that. He has wounded us. He said, but I can heal you. All these things were trying to get us back. He let us know in the third, you know what I mean? He said, I'm going I'm to comb you up. I'm going to get you up from the state that you're in. Let's look at something right quick in the fourth chapter, the same book, four and one. Since we're here, Husha, they'll call it Hosea. Anything that sounds Spanish. Why we have a book named out of Spanish man? It made absolutely no sense. See, you don't press to get you anything you from seeing you. One well, ain't no book Willie Dog with it. You know, man, I know a Willie Dog right here. Yeah, he don't do that. He don't do it. He don't give you a Spanish name, anything other than your Greek name, anything to keep you out of the book. Book come from you, your region, and the folk look like you. Ain't nothing named after you. See that? What a, let, let's see. That's when you got to sit down and start thinking how critical it is. Let me tell you something. In all they play, including him. The so-called Negro is damaged with religion. Yep. Religion the last thing to come talk to us about. That's right. It's too much damage. We were damaged. Listen, we came out. We were Southern Baptists. We shot our ass up north. We went Methodist. Episcopalian, non-denominated. Nigga, quit going to church. He damaged us so bad, so then everybody jumped off, started seeking out Islam. Something different than the white man, out of hurt. Then we came on and said Hebrew, we went to Hebrew Israelite. They had us smoking weed and everything and drinking beer, saying, man, the white man telling you, you can do this here, yeah? you can have all these white, you can have, because you, we were so hurt. Our information was so distorted out of our hurt. When you teaching that, you got to, I place myself where I'm at, but you got to have direction when you deal with it. That's why I make sure I ground myself. What was this written for? I express you got my hurt. I express you got my woes and different things happening. They come down this, we got to be factual. But at the same time, we got to be realistic of where we're at. Ain't nobody been hurt more than us with religion. People come out here, folk walk down the street, that, that don't impress me. That don't move us a bunch of people walk down the street with no Bible. They've done more damage than that. They came out of Africa with ships with Bibles. 
This has been a constant, and you've been raped and manipulated every time. Very few people have sat you down and talked to you on a level where you can actually see it makes sense, and you ain't getting played. You got to deal with where you at, and no hurts don't change. If I got a light, my light's going to get cut out tomorrow. If nothing you're going to show me here going to make me say, I ain't worried about my light or my light. Because realistically, I'd be proud. I'm going to be in a dog house with no electricity. So with all the hurts we got, we are people that need to know that there is some restoration. There is some, like, if he said, come back, you torn no work. No, he's going to fix that. that what else is going to make us come if you ain't going to fix it? I'm going to crawl myself over here and I leave him out of crawl back. I could just stay where I was. If I crawl to you, can I please walk back? If I come to you hungry, can you please feed me? Brother, I tell you what I'm going to do, brother. I ain't going to give you no food, brother. I'm going to give you something better than food. You think, oh, hell, a hunk of money. Knowledge. My damn stomach growl up. I can't eat no knowledge. See, but people play us on, oh, brother, I'm going to teach you how to go. Get me situated first and let me see you work with me from here. Then we'll try to move somewhere else. People try to put us on these plateau levels somewhere. Don't deal. Come get me where I'm at. Let's be practical. Talk to me where things are practical. This makes sense. This is logical. I can process this. You don't need no whole bunch of big bro words. You need to be able to process. I can't do it if I can't. There's some stuff I can give you. I tell you what I do. I got this. How many of y'all um, know the dictionary? Is? I'm going to give y'all one. I want y'all to eat it and just process that. Your ass is going to be so bagged up. You can't process that stuff in your stomach. Your stomach not made to do that. Y'all got it? That mind. But if this here got issue and this ain't right and this hurt, don't, don't try to put in that here ain't going to work. Because everything going to come back, you're going to give me it, that hurt from him and that hunger here going to come back. Anything you got. That's realistic. My damn stomach growling. You're talking about going to heaven in 155 years, 1,000 years from now. If you can say five years from now, to me, I heard 155 years. So now it's going to block anything you're trying to tell me. See, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Religion hurt us. We've been scarred. You don't realize how many marriages, how many kids been from religion. So we got to be practical when we talk. We got to be realistic. I tell people flat. Don't sit down and just let nobody teach you nothing. Be practical. Don't matter. Why won't nobody talk about your hurt? That realistic. You don't need nobody tell you no lies. You need people to tell you the truth. How am I going to get better? If you're looking for it to jump out there, to get this, to change you, you got to change yourself and you got to learn how to, how, to, how to depict this, how to really take this and use it to where it helps benefit you to get you where you're going. Don't look for this to come out that page and just make, you, uh, make something start happening. Nothing going to fly through the walls and jump through the ceiling and come down and touch you to do nothing. When you get this information, you're going to have to learn how to use it. That's why it got to be told to you in a way that you can process it so you can use it and it's practical to you to make the changes, okay? Let's look at that. Four and one. Listen. Shama to the Debar of Yahuwah. Listen with the intent to do. Listen to the word of Yahuwah. O Bani of Yasharal. That's right. And then point to know his name, the existing one. He wants you to listen to the existing one. Listen with the intent to do the, what the existing one said. He called you the Benim, the sons of Yasharal. What happened? For Yahuwah has a quarrel against the inhabitants of the Arats. See, that's why I want you to let you know you got a problem. You know, they said, let's talk about it. He said, well, let's talk about the problem. What happened? Because there is no Amat nor kindness, nor knowledge of Allahim in the Arant. See, that's why you got a problem with it. How we treat what, think about it. Look at what we have now. Y'all see love out here, what they call love? No. Y'all see these people having the knowledge of Allahim? No. His existence, or it, this man's will, or what this man coming back here to do, the people going on like it's nothing. He told you, but as it was in the days of Nuah, so it's going to be in the, in the, in the Yamin, the days of the coming of the Ben of Ish, and the Ben of Adam. He said, in the day that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Married and giving him marriage to so New York, went into the ark, and the flood came and took them all away. <clears throat> these people don't realize that man get ready to take us in, and these people have no idea. That man come back, and he's going to take them away. That's why it's important for us to process the thing we're written the fourth time. It was written for our learning. Yes, sir. All these stupid people tell us, man, all the, he gonna, I don't know how these folks come in, he's going to save all these people. How many people did he save in the days of New York? Eight. The man didn't save but eight people. How the hell these folks came in with all the black people getting saved? Who they think the Mizraim was? That's right. They were black. That's right. Who they call me. Let me say, black people are some of the dumbest folks on the planet. Dumb. They got to admit, cause they watch these damn movie and they think Charleston Heston is Jesus and Moses. He both of them, Jesus and Moses. No, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the Mexican man, Jesus. Charleston <laughs> Heston and Moses. 
and your brother is Pharaoh. <laughs> like, what y'all been doing? Don't y'all know everybody we was oppressed with in the Middle East were black? That's right. No, we're not white people. That's they were right. black. <clears throat> I don't know what these people thinking. Only people were white were people with leprosy. Mm-hmm. I don't know what these people think. All these people were people of color. Ain't nobody did you listen. You have a history of your own people doing you wrong. Please get over your color. Get over your hang up in your color thinking that all of us are the people and you can't prove that. The only way we're going to make ourselves a people now is going to be after the work. What do y'all think the purpose was of getting us over here and mixing all us up? What, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. What, what, what y'all think this about? Hmm? You can't use your race. You can't use your bloodline. It's impossible. It's impo- what do y'all think the whole purpose of putting us here for was? You can't trace yourself back to no Abraham from your bloodline. That's crazy. You telling me right now, there are some people right now can trace their bloodline back to Abraham. I like to see these niggas. All them white, scared ass folks over there. Ain't nobody original. Everybody been migrated and mixed. Where these people at? That's crazy. He tried to get us away from something. All of the people that came from Abraham that were blood lineage, those people dead. Just like you. You're going to die. Because he want to get it. It's got to be about Amunah, what they call faith. Okay? Our Amunah is working on our stability to stand with the word. When he got Abraham, Abraham was not Abraham, where he was not what we would call Hebrew at the time. He came down. They were known by another people. They were from there over near Syria. And see, they mix all that up because now you got places they cut land. So now it's argument away from Turkey because Turkey actually did go into Syria. It goes in, it actually it was Turkey. It actually goes into Syria. It actually goes into Babylon. It actually goes into Yasharal. It actually comes all the way back up and it goes into, what's that place they fight in now? Who? Not in Syria. No, not in Lebanon. In the Europe, Ukraine. It actually goes to Ukraine. People don't know that. People don't pay attention. It actually did. It actually goes to Ukraine. White people stopped it. A lot of white, that's why it's argumentative. People argue that Abraham, they'll keep arguing. Look at the three places Syria, and where they're going to tell you from. They're going to tell you he's from Turkey and he's from Babylon because Turkey actually went that far. White people took it and cut it back from you. So now you can argue. See, the whole argument is way from, and you don't realize Turkey was actually that big. Turkey was the only country that border eight countries. That's now. You don't have another country that border eight other countries. That's how big, that's where, because of where it sits at. It's key for us because of how far it goes and what all that border and where it went to. It went over into the land. White people can't cut it down, condense it. So now when you read your book, hell, you so confused, you don't know what to believe. And now what are they going to say? The book wrong. The book not wrong. White people changed it. You had a law. You were told when you came out, when you put down the stone. What was it told? You know why you weren't supposed to remove the old landmark? You don't know, that's right. You want, now you don't know where your board at. Why you think white people come put stakes down and move them? See, this is the problem we got. We spend so much time fighting each other. You haven't watched the people in the system. See, they don't have to come and really give you the guns and stuff they give you because you got so much misinformation. That's enough you'll kill each other anyway. That's why you got the wars over there. Rwandan fight each other. Hutu and the Tusa. Both their ass look just alike. You can pick a damn Hutu from a Tusa and save your life. But see, white people come in and try to teach them us a difference. They tell one of them you're a fair-skinned person in the other one, and you're original people. The other person said, they're original people, you're original. And now they walk out, and now y'all ass fight. That's what they do. And a white man come back in who started the fight, he walks in with a gun and say, listen, y'all need to stop shooting, and I come in with the gun. What you doing? I'm peacekeeping. Let me get your gun. I'm going to get your gun, and I'm peacekeeping. And now both y'all ass just lost everything. And you're hating each other. That way, he come in with a gun to settle peace. I mean, me, that me, me and you shooting at each other, we call the police. He ain't gonna come in with no Bible. He gonna come in with a gun to stop us. But he gonna want everybody to give up their guns. That's how he get it. It's just logical that he's the better person to have a gun than you. What you think wrong with your mind to read? He convinced you that he better have a gun than you. He came and got you from Africa with the gun. That, that, my people don't have no better sense. Don't worry about it. It's, just, it's logical. It makes less logical that you should borrow the gun from him. If you create a gun and you build a gun and he ain't certified a sailor, and then it, that gun ain't legal. You can have that gun. I got to build it. I got to build it and stamp it in number so it can be legal and you can have it. 
He permits, he allows, he gives you. And you know what? Because he keeps that control over you, you don't realize it hurts. It hurts you religiously. You can't go but so far, even men, because every, everything you got, you got to process him in it. You can go ahead and make an all-black movie. You know damn well you look at it, that shit not practical. You go to an all-black family reunion, but you watch an all-black movie, that's not practical. You know life don't work like that. It's practical to look at a movie and it's all white characters and everybody white in it. You don't even think twice about it. That's, that's life. It's his system, it's his state, it's his world. See, you don't gave him the whole world. He gave you a neighborhood. Don't worry about it. I don't want you to think too hard because it'll mess you up. I don't want you to think no less of them than what you think. Well, really, you won't think no less of them, you'll think less of yourself. They just talk about quarreling the heavens of the land because there is no truth, no kind, and no knowledge of Allahim in the land. Let's see what happens. You need to know what's going on in the land, why it's so destructive. He said, because there's no knowledge of me. Listen. Cursing and lying and killing See that? and stealing and committing adultery and increase. That's what they're taking, cursing. That's what he's doing, cursing. He said, that's not what he's talking about, cursing and pronouncing something on people. That's right. That's what cursing is. He tried to tell you, no cursing. You say, damn, damn is an aubrey word for blood. That's right. He just processed it. Hell can't be a bad word. Hell ain't even, it's, ain't even a real place. That's right. It's a Greek word for something he made up. She is the place where you go and you burn. But see, he gave it to you, the name of the original Greek. The Greek's original name was the Hellenese. See, it's stuff he just didn't tell. He gave it to her. You were a little kid, you said, hell, pow, who says a bad word? Man, I made up a word, gave it to you, and you got slapped and got whooped for saying it don't even say it. It's not even a real place. Hmm? When they slap you in the mouth, you say Superman. Deputy Dog, that's real? <laughs> you didn't get slapped in your mouth. <laughs> See that? They just ain't teaching no better. That's a, see, y'all don't realize that you can think, I'm just pushing to the stream. I'm not pushing to the stream. If you don't address where you're at and look at where you got all your phobias from, you can't ever progress and get to where you need to go him. I'm being honest. A lot of phobias, that will hold us up. Look at the man talking, cursing, lying, killing, and stealing, and committing adultery. Increase. And Dom touches against, and touches Dom. That's right. He's saying blood, touch your blood. Listen. Therefore, the Arats mourns, and everyone who lives in it languishes along with the beasts of the field and uh -huh. with the birds of Shamayim. Yeah. And also the fish of the yam disappear. See that? He said, and you know what's amazing? Now, when this was written, this was way old folks at back yonder. That's right. Y'all know they said they got miles of ocean that has no fish That's in it. That's right. That's right. How many of y'all didn't know that? <clears throat> they have, listen, I want to, listen. They have miles of ocean. Yes, sir. They have no fish in it. Can you imagine that? That's right. The distance between, they used to tell you all the creatures in the ocean, is more creatures in the ocean. Than they have miles of ocean. There are no fish in it. Nothing. Listen, he told you about it before they came. They don't want to tell you, what you listen, if people really knew where the world was, don't you know people would do something? Let me ask something. Y'all said chill and tower. If they build a car on fire, how many of y'all can sit here like that? What y'all going to be doing? Running. Y'all going to try to take your time and try to walk orderly? What y'all going to be trying to do? Run. Why y'all think they ain't told y'all what's going on? Why y'all think they ain't told y'all? They don't have enough people to control all the people. So you can't tell them that. You don't need to know that. That's gonna have you worried. That's gonna have you frantic. That's gonna have you concerned and how you spend your money and what you're doing and what you start processing to be more important for you. So they give you things that's important for you. Christmas, be stupid. Christmas is about family. Christmas is about loving one another. It's a cheer. It's about the kids and make sure kids and toddlers and crippled kids get stuff. What the kids do on the 26th? Why the hell nobody don't care about these kids on the 26th and the 27th? They ain't going to be crippled on the 30th. <clears throat> what, the, what about them kids, uh, Martin Luther King birthday? Do you know how ignorant you are that these crowd can help process your mind to think your narrow ass need to run down here to the homeless shelter to buy up all these toys and food for one damn day and these kids ain't going to be hungry on the 26th? They don't need no clothes. They don't need no cheer on no other day. February, March. April, May, June, July, August, September, November, we'll give them a little something. What, what is wrong with our mind that we think that we actually come along and we showing some kind of, some kind of spirit from the most high because we buying some damn toys on Christmas? 
Them kids need a home. Those people need folk prosecutor who broke the home or they got those kids in those centers. Nobody want to talk about that. So they do that. That's how white people feel better about themselves. They can tell their little white friend, I went and helped a crippled kid. Yeah, that's right. For Christmas. That's right. I went and got some kid Christmas list and filled it in. What about, you think them kids just start wishing that one day for something? That's right. What you think a kid not wishing for Christmas or a home, a family? Not getting molested in them places. That's right. But they, they, this is what people do to make themselves. So you can go tell your friends you sit around in your little groups and make you feel like you somebody. For the record, you ain't shit. That's right. Listen. Yet let not in each strive with, with nor reprove in each. What for happened? your arm are like a kahan striven with. Listen. So you shall stumble by Yum, and the Nabi shall stumble with you by Layla, uh -huh. and I shall destroy your aim. See, th this is the important we say here. Now he's talking about uh, stumbling in the daytime. See, when Yahushua came to us, he talked about why he was in the world, in the alarm. He said he was the light, the aura of the, of the alarm, of the world. And he talked about it. Why he was there, what was he saying we didn't have no time to do? No occasion of stumbling. Occasion is an opportunity, which is a favorable time. He said there's no time to stumble when there's the light. There's, there's not a, it shouldn't be, it's not, it's not uh, probable for you to fall when you can see. So you're stumbling because you can't see in the daytime. And now he said nighttime you're going to wind up falling and you're going to wind up stumbling. Your Nabi, the Nabi was somebody we looked at. These people constantly see are constantly flowing. And because they're giving us information directly for Allahim, Allahim the, the mighty one, then this is another reason why we shouldn't be stumbling. Because I have the information and I have sight. And you don't realize why we keep faltering, why we keep failing, it's because we got something going on. And he's letting us know, I have a problem with you guys because of what's going on in the world. And the problem becomes, we are participants, are supporters, are lovers of these people. Okay. Okay, let's see. He talked about it in the book of Romans, in the, 20th, in the first chapter, he talked about all these people with these behaviors. He, they always go to homosexual. He said, not only these, he said, but those that have pleasure. Pleasure, in that's right. He said, all these people are worthy of death. He said, for those that have pleasure in people that commit the acts, he said, you worthy of them. So the problem becomes with the world, we don't control the world, but we take pleasure in these people. We don't tell these people about their wrongdoing. We don't even, we don't even, we don't even separate ourselves from these people. We attach ourselves to these people. Okay, come on. My arm are destroyed for lack of knowledge mm. because you, you have rejected knowledge. And because of what? You have rejected knowledge. What happened? I also shall reject you from being my kohan to me. See that? that that's important because a kohan, they call it, this is somebody that ministers, that serves him. He said, because you reject this information, he said, I won't let you serve me. I won't use you in that capacity. And that's detrimental for us because this is somewhere we need to make sure we're at. Things that were, 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 were particulars when it came down to Kohan were the fact that their lips were supposed to keep knowledge. And the people were supposed to seek the Torah at our mouth. He said, because he is the messenger of Allahim, which is the Malachi. We got to start um, changing how we do things so we can get ourselves in a better situation. The only way to change the outcome of what's going to happen to us is to change what we're doing. Okay? Things don't just change by themselves. We have to start making changes. That's why I point the word come. It's time for us to examine ourselves. Time to really look at where we're at and look at what you're really trying to do. Don't let, don't, don't fool yourself. And you can get complacent and you can be doing something for so long, it can seem right. Like he told us in the book of, I think in the 12th chapter or the, or the 14th chapter, 12th chapter, I think in the book of Marshall Lee, they call probably, he talked about, there here's a way that seemed right to a man. He said, but at the end, there are the ways of death. And these are the things we're trying to make sure because we saw we thought Baptist was right, Presbyterian, non-denomination, holiness was right, and all these things seem good for the moment. But he told us, but the end of this death, and that's what we're trying to look now. We're trying to secure ourselves that we don't wind up taking on the ultimate death because of our lack of knowledge. That's why we look at. He told us whatever was written the fourth time was written for our what? Lament. Lament. So he said they destroyed for lack of knowledge. Doesn't it make sense that we sit down and we become knowledgeable? 
which means we have a range of information, especially based off of all the things we've seen come on the, on the alarm. It's only, it's, I mean, it's detrimental for us not to do it at this point. The world ain't going to get no better. It ain't going to fix itself. It's abrupt. It's a, for a reason. He's displeased with us. And no one has told her the man is not pleased with us. He's not pleased with what's going on. I know we're just trying to make it. We're trying to do this and all this. At the same time, we got to be cognizant and conscious of our behavior and how we end a lot with the word. Y'all got it? This is something we have to attach ourselves to. We have to make sure this becomes our measuring stick for ourselves. Making sure we don't fall into the same detriment of the people that came before us. Y'all got it? He told her, as it were written, what did the people do? And did what? Rose up to play. They sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And he let us know with these people he was not well pleased with them. Is this something we need to do? This is something that we need to be conscious of. That we don't put ourselves in that same situation of condemnation. If you think about it, it's going to be harder for us than it was for them. A lot of things that forefathers that came before us, they didn't have the knowledge we had. But these people moved because of their confidence and all of him. We're coming back now because we get to second guess what they did. Everything they did was at the first. This could very well be the end of everything I got here. You had a lot of one-time opportunities. I don't. How many times did he get to mess up in the garden? Wow. Can you imagine getting to second guess that? I mean, she gave it to me. I was hungry. I ate it. I really didn't think he was going to put me out of here like that. But did he get a chance to repeat it, correct it, fix it? I got a chance to correct it. How many times I messed up? How many I touched unforbidden fruit? How many times I, I can't say I didn't know. I'm talking about what I knew. I ain't going to talk about what I didn't know. What I knew. So I can't afford to mess this up. In the second chapter of the book of Romans, he told me, you are inexcusable, man, whoever you are. Mm -hmm. He said, you judge another and you don't realize that, you don't, that the same meat you're going to mess out, it's going to come right back against you. That's right. He said, you can't even escape the judgment out here, the condemnation. That's how important it is for us to sit back and really become conscious of making sure we line this thing up and making sure we're right. You can't play games all your life. That's right. Don't do what I've done and so many people did. Keep lying to yourself. I'd rather be realistic with myself. This is something I know I ain't going to do. I've been with you. I'll walk off and leave it. For the fact that where I'm at in my life, I really ain't got time to try to play no game to make nobody feel well. At this point in my life, really, I could really give a damn how folk feel about me. When it comes down there, if it's my choice, I'm doing this because this is my choice. I want to save my soul. That's honestly, I ain't here because my family gonna look at me funny. And so a lot of people have done stuff based off other people. And you know what they wind up having? They wind up acting out later a different way. Now if four kids were forced into stuff, then later on, then it come out, I never wanted to do it. I did it, but you said, damn, where'd that come from? Because they realized like, this wasn't something I wanted. I want to do this. If I don't want to come, I'm gonna turn my car and just go. That ain't what I want to do. Listen, right or wrong, you need to be honest with yourself. That's that man, like, well, we, we've done this for years. People go to church, play church 20, 30 years, mess, and walk. You say, what happened? Because they'll never what they want to do. People run somewhere for cover sometimes. I ain't run. First, I came for cover, but I came to be covered forever. I never came, I never came because I wanted to be covered just to get away for the moment. I knew I had to get myself right from that point on. That, I meant that I knew I, I didn't, I, I want, you know, you, I did stuff, you know, I used to pray and I got locked up. I have locked about nine times. I pray, I, I, somebody have said, let me read the Bible. I read the Bible, then I say, did that. That's how I can get out of jail. All that's how I can get out of jail, get past, I'm going back. It was never serious. It was never serious to that point. When he drove me to come their way, it was serious. I knew this couldn't be like the jail thing. I know this couldn't be like other times it was. This was sign, you're going to die. You're going to die a horrible death. It ain't looking good for you. It wasn't, I, wasn't, I was never worried about I was going to go to sleep and wasn't going to wake up. No, I worry about I had to feel something ain't going to kill you. You're going to die a horrible death. That's, that thing reeked on me. You're going to die a horrible death. I wouldn't think, never thought that I'm going to go to sleep that I ain't going to wake up. No. I was looking at they're going to kill you, son. You're not getting out of this one. No matter how it go, you're not getting out of it. It's not going to work to your favor. And it weighed, and it weighed, and it pressed it on me, and it drove me, and I said, I give up. I give up. I'm done. I got to get it right. I can't do it no more. It drove me to that point. And you got to get there. 
You got to get there. I'm just being honest. If you're going to be serious, just say you're right. You got to get there. He told you laying aside every way and saying, I had to lay it aside. Then I start looking at stuff, I got to lay it aside. You got to get rid of it. I can't wonder what I can hold on to. Get rid of it. Let it go. You got to get rid of it. That's the only way you're going to get right. You got to get rid of it. But you got to go back. When you read and look at these people, all the four, our forefathers that came before us, all these people made mistakes. And these mistakes they were made, guess what? That was for me. Because he know me. I'm that type of nigga. If I see a way, I'm going to take it. If I can get around it, I'm going to try it. If it's to get over, I'm going. And when I watch these people couldn't get out of what they done, he did that for me. Like, that's how I approach it. Because I'm that type of nigga. I ain't going to tell you no lie. I'm that type of nigga. I'm going. I'm going to try it. It just makes sense. It's a crack hole. I'm going to see if I can get through it. And you know what he did? He cut it all off. I ain't had no choice but to say, I'm done. I can't go back that way. I ain't had no way. If I could have, I was going. Why wouldn't I? That's, that was my M.O. Until he cut everything off and just put it to where I ain't no way around it. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be that point. Otherwise, you ain't going to make that change. You don't ever get to that point. And then, you know, over time, you just kind of keep, un, you know, taking the layers off. Because you don't realize how many layers of personality, how many layers of people you care from the people out with, the stench of them, the mindset of them, the thinking of them, the rationale of them. How you just do stuff. You don't realize I was a wretched person. I was wretched people. When in the sixth chapter of the book of Yeshayahu, they call Isaiah, he said, in the year that Uzziah, uh, Uzziah, they call Uzziah, he said, that's what he said, he seen him. And he was high and lifted up in the train, he said, fill the temple, the Mashkan. And then he told her, he said, when he came down, he told he said, I'm a man of, what was it, room? Unclean lips. And what happened with them people around how clean they were? He said, I dwell with people. That was me. I had to clean up that. I had to get around from them people. Them people dirt up my flesh. People, you, you'd be surprised. The people I with, you attach to people. People, you, you, I hear people say, I try to figure out where people come. They be like, you know, you could pick up people. I try to figure out, I don't know what these people. But what it is, they go a little deeper. You, the book said, be not deceived, 1 Corinthians, you don't have to get it, 1533. Evil communication. He said, corrupt good manners. He said, I told you to wait to Sadi and send not for some have not the knowledge of Elohim. That's why he said we were destroyed for the lack of, he said my people are destroyed for the lack of Elohim. And they didn't realize you can't be around everybody. They said, man, I, I can't be around everybody. You can't be around everybody. People said, yes, you can. You say you can. No, you can't. Yes, Yahoo said, I've been around people. He said, unclean lips. He said, I walk in and miss the unclean people. He said, then one of them seraphim flew down and touched my lip with a live coat. Said, this is purged out your katar. Got rid of your sin. So what you think? He said, I got to stay around these people. Got to separate, become a dog. Hello? That means you got to run high from people, but you got to take your stance on what you do and what you don't do. People got, because it's, it's one of them balancing acts. Let me see. You the light of the, and what you about to do with your light? So, honestly, you can say it. So you're going to be some around people, but you got to make sure you don't turn and come dim like them. So it's that balance. I ain't gonna, the girl ain't going to go, Hell, I ain't gonna shine at no nightclub. Right. I mean, I, I mean, and I ain't gonna be no titty ball with it. Right. I keeps it real. I ain't no sideline player. I ain't no digger playing around and peeking. Nope, nope. Come on out that stage. We got to go play now. <laughs> and my life, go in the strip club, blow your light out. Don't even do it. I'm just being honest. It's just plays you're real. I don't even play with. I ain't trying to sound strong. I ain't no liquor store and with no damn bill on no counter. I just have a drinking problem. Uh, I was getting mad as hell when I ran out. Man, my problem was bad. That's a drinking problem. <laughs> Ain't that right? You're mad as hell when you ain't got no more. <laughs> Ain't that right? You got to go get some more. That's a drinking problem. So a lot of stuff I don't play with. I don't play with no beer. I don't play with no wine. I don't play with no wine coolers. I don't play with them because I wasn't playing then. I was dead serious. I do drinking contests. I try to see if I can hold it like that damn bottle on that shelf. I don't play with it. That's it. Some fault. Like some of y'all, y'all be all y'all go drink right now. You, you be just fine. Cause you could, I had a, I had a problem. I don't play with it. You get with I don't play. I don't play with no strip club. I used to go down and, you know, I went a few times, did like that. I wouldn't have no payments. I couldn't do it. I, 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 I'm, I'm just not that guy. I, I wasn't that guy. And I was like, I ain't paid. You had fun. Yeah, that's what it's called. Mine ass. <laughs> just didn't get it. You paid. But so. I just said a lot of stuff. I was, I'm telling you, where I was, how that, I just looked, I always wanted people to look at, I didn't want anybody to get over on me. 
I always look at stuff as getting over on me. So that put me on, I'm just, I, the people, that's how you look at shit. You look at stuff, stuff getting over on you. See, like, I ain't want to do nothing. I felt like nobody getting over me. I just don't want to do it because it ain't going to work out good. So I just kind of let that little, let that little thing now. I had a friend, that was, they just love the damn deal. They all of him like the handshake. I said, hey, it's, you way too far out here. You ain't mad around pissing your face. Be like, I don't, I don't play like that. I ain't never, I, I ain't never that type of guy with no girl. No, I'm, don't piss something I'm good. I'm not the toilet. I want them to, you know what I'm saying? Have my fault, do my thing. I ain't that deep like that. Y'all got it? That's everybody just where you at. I don't want nothing I felt like nobody get over me. I don't want, mm -mm, I don't want nobody like they getting over on me. I feel like you got over them. I had to go and, and pour some elephant piss in the pour on you just so I make sure I got more on you than got on me. Make sure it got to be way more. They say, he, she pissed on you. He said, I pissed way more on her than she pissed on me. Just didn't want folk to get over on. You know what I'm saying? Then he had to get over there and realize those were things about me. You'd be surprised. Coming the way teach you care, teach you things about yourself. All of come from different walks of life. There's some things I've done, some you've never done, some things you've done I've never done. But that's what make us all different. But all of us come to this one concrete point of realizing it was time for change. And, and y'all young people, you people, you shouldn't talk like that to young people, young people. I try to tell y'all, see, don't hear no lie. Let me tell you the problem with, with me. Everything I learned, I learned from experience. Every experience ain't good. Some experience is damaging to you, and that kind of formulates you to be this kind of person that it can make you this real bad person. Some experience I don't want y'all to learn. I really y'all just take our advice for it. I know some stuff y'all got to just go because you got to see. That's just your leg. When y'all come here, damn, eye going to be gone, leg missing, um, ass done done all that time, tattooed all up. Hell, can't see nothing in your face. And you're going to want to talk to the young people. I'm going to tell you this. If I ain't told you now, remember it. Shut your damn mouth. We don't want to hear it. We already done it. I'm not going to be impressed with the shit all across your face. Go do that on some construction paper. I'm going to and shoot your damn life in the foot and then try to come in and try to talk to us then. People don't need it. So a lot of us done gone through, just like these people. These people look at all the folks we read about, they already done it. So they looking at what they thinking. You can't be that damn stupid. I lost everything doing what you did. This didn't teach you nothing. Like I see a man on the street. I said, what's wrong with him? Well, he smoked crack. He out on the street, homosexual, shitting on himself, got that. And get what I want to do. I'm motivated to smoke crack. Makes no sense. I never looked at people home and said, damn, I need to try to be like that. Whatever you've done, that's what exactly what I don't want to do. It's, a, it's like, how does somebody process in their mind, there's been no successful crack users? It don't work. So for you guys to go to try to reinvent the wheel, think you'll do something different, it's lesion play. It's not lesion play how you get caught up. That's how I got caught up in shit. You lesion play. Lesion play go way a lot further than what you're thinking. I was just one marijuana for as I went. Other friend went to sprinkling. Snowing a little bit of shit. You think, okay, cool, they doing their thing. Out of the while, they put that shit in the way you start smelling. Out of the while, they will crumble that rock up. You say, I know that ain't what I think it is on now. A geek joint? You're like, that ass gone. You say that a geek joint? And I know, I'm telling you, I know they gone. You have a regular joint, you try to hand it to them. They say, you look at them just like, they talk here smoke weed. Just, Cause once you throw that, once you don't put that geek on now, you ain't come back to marijuana. You done. I'm telling you, I've seen that too many times. I watch them guy. I already know where you're going. You ain't fooling me. Your ass is on that pipe. You going straight to pipe. I have seen guy at the house. Like, yeah, he said, man, we. Yeah, I just drank but Yeah, that, that we had me a loose now. You know the hell. We got you. I know what you're doing. Your ass done got on here and start smoking. Then jumped out the old bottle. <laughs> I see your fighting style. Come on. <laughs> I already see your fighting style. That shit don't fool me. I've seen it all, man. I've seen God listen. I, done, I tell y'all, I done told the young folk before, don't pray. I ain't gonna, listen, I'm telling you, shut your damn mouth, sit down. We don't need to hear it. I done already told y'all about it. Watch your group, watch your peer group, watch people around. I told you, use your head. Watch, before y'all watch, y'all gonna be surprised. School, I already know I did say, everybody all on, where do you got to school? The ass gonna be on crack rock. The ass gonna be out here on the street homeless. The ass gonna be sitting right in there in that, in that damn zappy with no teeth in their mouth. Y'all said, get some time. We all come from now. You be like, this, I seen folk, man, I looked up to them, you see them folk, they ain't worth a damn. You're like, here I was, all that damn want to be like these folk, you ain't shit. You put your, listen, time, time bring about a chain. Don't put your eyes on about it, focus yourself on what you need to do, stay focused. Get you a plan, stay focused. Y'all got to get you a plan, stay focused. Don't get driven off nobody, other folk move at their speed. Remember, you don't know what they're doing to do what they got. So keep your mouth off and just take your time. 
I, I see a lot of folks stuff. I'm not impressed with what I learned. That's your, you doing, all right, that's all right. That's your thing. Don't be sitting around hating on folk because they got something. That's their thing. Some folk willing to throw away everything they got, their life and all, for some bullshit. Let them have it. Don't you be like them. Focus. Y'all got it. Y'all young kid, y'all got a future. I'm like Uncle Rucker. Y'all got on that bus. I ain't let them kill you. You ain't got no future. I'm going to let y'all on that bus because you got a future. Y'all got it. Uncle Rucker, maybe we'll let them kids on that. Don't want y'all got to have a rap beef and shoot each other up. That's cool, but for a kid with a future. Y'all kids in here because you got a future. You got an opportunity to get your soul saved, align yourself, and get your mindset so you can go out here and be productive. And stop going here and letting folk take from you, make a fool out like you. Go out here and wreck it down like, like all the things you want to give them. I don't want to tell them about it. Sit your ass down. Sit down. We want to hear you. will be all right. Get up and live it. We don't want to hear you talk about it. Get up and live it. Isn't that right? You need to be real when be practical. And y'all here don't mess your life up. You ought to be a proponent to help these kids too. Yeah. We don't need no more. We, can, we can't afford another generation of crack users. What the hell, it fitting now, if 4,000, you talking about, what is it, 9,000 pounds or something can kill 300 million people? That shit ain't, and where y'all think they'll get dropped off at? What, how long, what neighborhood are they going to be at the wild? You know it's coming. We got it. You know we already own it. These schools put on these kids, these damn cell phones, these social media sites, their ass don't need to do nothing. Mother kid can't even damn speak to one another. What the hell you need a social media site for? Well, these kids, they damn nerds. I ain't never seen so many nerds in my damn life. Man, the only nerd we have is on the bar. Hell, that was candy. How the hell are you a nerd? <laughs> I mean, man. I ain't Because, look, they've taken away their social skills. These kids can't communicate. If they ain't got a damn phone, typing, pushing something, they can't do nothing. Throw a ball at that, they'll miss it. Huh? They don't know the hell about You throw a ball at that, they can move it right out. They're going to duck. These kids don't know how to do nothing. Nothing outside. They don't know how to do shit. Play marble, nothing. They don't know how to do nothing. I mean, the social skill gone. I'm talking about global. These kids, they just not kids no more. They come out, they computer wizards and doing all of them. But for a common damn sense and learn how to communicate, operate, and be human, no. They ain't got it. Can't get them to talk, add that crazy. You can't do that shit. You can't go no job walking on that shit like this. Don't y'all hey, man, your ass finna get shot. I'll shoot your ass. Be working on what the hell you finna do. You like you finna start psychoing on somebody. They gotta learn how to be. Not saying not how to kinda have like look not kinda go, man. Like, you know, they're lying. You can't go around like that. Y'all gotta get personality. You can't, you gotta get, we gotta draw y'all out personalities. All this stuff. King got no personality. Man, we can't. I had all kind of personality. Yeah, I had personality. I had personality in the daycare. I had person get out in the third grade. Person I did walk to the store. Well, two and a half, a year and a half. Well, what, what, three. Yeah, three. Person that walked to the store. Folks see him. They say, "Kid, going personality." See, y'all need person. Got to teach it. Y'all got to have all this stuff help form you coming up now. I need. I'm gonna pick y'all some good shoulder wise. Help build Fred Sanford. You need to hear you a diamond. That helped the money grow and be something that right. A diamond. You need to hear that so you know some decision you make can be done. I'm a, I'm a drop. How many of y'all kids want to be somebody? All right, I'm going to write y'all out a TV list, and y'all just take your time and watch them and learn how to pay. Jerry Seinfeld, so you see white folk. Yeah, they, they ain't going to let you watch that. You got to get somewhere. First, you got to get past yourself. Well, they didn't see white folk. They didn't see cream ass ain't got no job and still keep apartment in New York. So you know what you ain't going to do. Ain't that right? Where the hell, where y'all done seen cream go to work? Mess up more damn stuff than a little bit. Man, take a shower with it, with it dishes and the food and take a bath. See, that's your, I want you to watch how unrealistic what, but see, let me tell you something. This, I'm, I'm gonna get ready to let y'all go. You win. Go ahead and get your mind out. Listen, but I want you to watch it for the fact of, I want you to see how unpractical it is and how insulting it is to you. But it don't take anything away from white people. Kramer doesn't demean white, what white people you walk around and say, oh, all white boys are Kramer. It don't even come to your mind. Soon as you see a black man, quote unquote, black man do something negative, it's you. It hurts your race. Kramer didn't hurt them one time. Kramer didn't have a job, made the dumbest decision, always did the stupidest shit, didn't work out, but it was funny and it never demeaned white people. You see that? That's why I want them to watch it. I want them to see how important it is for you to have character and you to be conscious of you doing things and you hurting and it affects your whole race. See, they hold you to that standard. Okay, don't worry about it.
They created the system. It, it's not a white show. I can go create a white show and call myself trying to make white people look bad. You can't do it. Because they ain't going to let it on now. If it's too detrimental, too, you know what they're going to look at? We're not putting it on the album. If it's going to be something where well, I'm going to show every black man is homosexual, I create a show saying every black man is gay. He hiding. They're going to give me so much sponsorship. That shit going to be playing. Oh, listen, they're going to cancel the Super Bowl. World Series, they'll be like, ho, 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 this is important. People need to see this because it's going to hurt. It's going to demean people of color. They're not going to let me or you create anything of truth or of lies against white people going to hurt their race. They're not doing it. What they told you they're going to teach critical racism? What well, they going to teach about teaching white kids about slavery and detriment? I said, what happened to that? They shut that shit down. No white folk can't cook. They said, you ain't teaching that. They said, you ain't putting up having these kids walk around with no guilt for no slavery. Huh. That's scary. But I can put all kind of shit up and demean you and show us as homosexual men. That's scary. That people just, it don't matter about us. We, and you can't stop it. You ain't gonna stop Tyler Perry. You ain't gonna stop Oprah. You ain't gonna stop none of these people. Look at her. Even that show, that purple wig. Purple, what that purple, I mean, what that thing was in? Yeah, that color purple too. What that show? Okay, y'all don't know that. I hated Danny Glover. I ain't like his ass till he killed Fred. I said, damn, I'm gonna start like it. God said, damn, man, how you did it? What do y'all think? Look at him. That candy looking ass Oprah Winfrey. What do y'all think her intent was? Show the black woman she can fight through stuff. This during a time of racism. This was a time when racism was very much alive. Who don't get Oprah ass got knocked out by a white man. Who hated that white man more than they hated Oprah, hated um, Danny Glover ass? See that took the light off of him. Y'all remember that Nate laid her ass out? Listen, moved it straight out. Her eyes stayed closed in it. What it was, women. Soon as you say something to a black woman, you said, excuse me, man, you got to wait. Everything you gonna touch gonna fall. You're like, damn, I'm finna get the dope for you. I may be black, I may be ugly, but you gonna die, nigga. I got so sick of these two finger damn women walking around here. Cause everything, they love to come throw something negative. They don't go throw that show nobody white. Just let me ask you a question. You ever seen black women before? You ever interacted with black women? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He said, what? Now, but I'm saying, have you ever seen one come like this and tell you everything you touch going to fall till you do right by them? Have they ever stuck them two fingers out on you? No, sir. See that? How many of y'all guys have seen them do that stuff? Okay. See, they'll do it. See, but you see, it's because of the psyche. Who on the show was she doing it to? The white one look right doing it to Justin. He's not the character. The, the, whole, the whole theme of the show was to get you to look at the black man is holding you down. He's keeping you in. He's the one manipulate. He's the one be you, and you gotta get away from him. Okay. Okay. Y'all, all right. Y'all go ahead, man. Y'all go ahead. Look what Oprah got back with Harp Hoppo. After she can control his ass. Think about what she came, but what she told her, Miss Sophia. I'm back here now. What she said, you heard what she told her. She was back. Running her mouth. Told her daddy, shut up, you old fool. Then she can. That when she come back. What's up? Y'all don't get, what y'all think the like? That's why I talk, I watch these shows, because I'm trying to look at, what's your intent? You see what I'm saying? I'm watching, what's your, somebody coming, hey, my brother, let me get you something. First thing I'm talking, what kind of shit you finna try to pull? I'm watching you see if you finna try to pull something you trying to get, what, what, you, what you want? You see somebody that come, hey, my brother, what's up, my brother, what's good? Cause that shit here, I'm trying to figure, what's all the touching? I don't know, what, what, I just want to know where we going, what's, what's going on? Is this an honest intent? There's something you got something going. When I watched that going with the wind shit, she had that, I already knew, there's some shit. That's the same thing. That shit gone. I ain't paying no attention. It, it gone with the wind. All of the same stuff. They just make a fool out of it. And we don't realize. And y'all know how many women walk, walk around and left their man behind that? They, they ain't going to use that. But see, it built, it started building, it started building the fundamentals of it's time to leave him. Because you think about it, in a sense, you miss Sealy. He, okay. He Danny Glover. Okay. How many of y'all women tell the truth? Didn't see yourself in a similar situation. How many of y'all seen yourself in a similar situation at that? Nobody seen yourself in a similar situation? No female at the, at the Whippet Goldberg? One? One of them? Nobody else seen it? That's all right. Y'all got it. That's all right. I said, when we in that judgment line, that man come and say, the man asked you a question. <laughs> Don't be looking around. I said, I, said, I tried to tell him. No, we were sitting there just a line. 
And I go, I have my hand right in my heart. I know it. Yeah. They know they see that stuff. They see a show where a woman getting done wrong and something happened wrong with a woman. A man finna get that hate. Especially that man look like a. Y'all fool y'all say. How many of y'all women can admit that? That don't play a part. I see one right there. You, yeah, you see a show and there's a brother. He's doing that woman wrong. And you, you, might, even you might say, damn, man, that kind of rough how he's doing. You saying that, you a man. You don't want to know what she's saying. That burning bed got folk ass set on fire. Y'all mean that burning bed? That's why I don't play it no more. Y'all mean it was one way. They, it's because we burnt their men up right from watching that show. Okay. They play, yeah, the burning, y'all mean the burning bed? She poured the guy. Hey, you know, some women did it to the old man. That's what they do. I'm trying to tell you, it's not folks. A lot of folks ain't strong on watching no TV. Now y'all, get y'all wife a damn coloring book. <laughs> that ain't strong enough. What's a little cute ass little animals and stuff? Don't get them nothing crazy. Yeah, folks not strong enough. Y'all just don't know it. We, we, we ain't got that far. Let me tell you something. Huh? I seen them. Them coloring books coming. Listen, man. Y'all don't realize why we, listen. Look at them countries like Iran and them in different country. They don't let women read. They don't let, and what they show again? Oh, they oppressing women. Huh? No, they keeping that shit down out of them. They know what they're doing. So they start reading really, really the wrong shit. It be some shit about hurting us. Some shit about getting away from us and we the devil. They know what they do. They don't let their go nowhere to They got to sit outside to a man come and take them somewhere. Got to be their husband, their brother, or their uncle. They can't go to a cousin around. That's, yeah, they can't do that. So they don't do that. You can't be around no cover no man. They tell them, what they like, what you around the car? Is it your husband? Is it your brother, your daddy, or your uncle? Hey, they say you don't even be call no man. They just like keep them, they just look at keep them stuck. Like, oh, we so oppressed. Why you think them men put something like that in the country? They know, y'all, it's a lot of shit going from other men and from you. They just better be safe. They get in them book, they rest around, look at them now. They go there, get that uh, uh, Whitney Houston shit, I'm every woman, it's on me. How the hell you ever, you don't, you just damn say, how I'm every man? I'm one person. That too many spirit. Get your shit and they shit and get out of here. <laughs> Hell, I need every woman in my house for. Ain't that right? I don't need all that shit in here. One woman, you every woman, get their ass, get y'all, pack y'all shit to get out of here. I don't need all y'all in here because gonna be. I, ain't, I can't fight. You can't fight no every woman. All right, they don't want to. All right, go ahead. I don't listen to it. A lot of stuff we can't play. Here you go, Malcolm. We losing money. Yeah, for older men. Call Keegan on your bird. That's I got. I just want to see where you was at. That's um the day, Shabbat Layla and Shabbat you. If I don't make it, bring my chain back to my casket. And all right, he ain't, he ain't made it that far. If I pass, just bring it with me. I don't know what's gonna happen. Might be so I can spend five dollars. Just in case. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, make sure we just want to make sure we got this thing right. And I appreciate y'all patience and y'all tolerance. And appreciate Mr. Yahuwah the existing one for sparing us and being able to sit down and be able to look in the word, man, and be real. I want to be real. I ain't gonna lie, I'm fake. I've been fake most of my life. You know what I'm saying? I ain't fake like uh, hypocrite to people, but hypocrite to myself because I wasn't realistic. And you, you can live your life and realize you lived it. You never lived it really to be you. And you ain't never get your full potential because you've been trying to make believe and trying to be this image for other people. And you never created one for yourself. And I'm, and, and men, that's something hard for us to say. Because you know, oh, fake ass nigga. So we're afraid of saying, I want true. It ain't about you manipulating other people because the time you spend manipulating other people, you really manipulating yourself. I just rather be straight down the middle. It's just easy. Either you like me or you don't. And I tell you, it is your choice. At the end of the day, you got the choice to like what you don't like. But let's just respect each other. We all have a mutual respect. We just keep moving. They do it in the animal kingdom. They don't hear animal walk around how they hate each other. They just stay out. Some of them just don't mess with each other. They're like, I still hear you stuff. We just keep it moving. Ain't that right? They keep the conflict down. And for us, we, a lot of conflict we won't have, it was just true to ourselves. Y'all hear, I heard it said, to thy own self be true. You ain't had to wait on no white man to tell you that, make that no famous saying. That's just the truth. To your own self be true. I got to live with me. I got to sleep with me. I got to eat with me. I need to feel good about me. You got to be with you. The same thing I say about me, the same thing go to you. Be real with yourself. If people don't want you being the honest you, the best you you can be, then they want me for you to be with them in the first place. Whether friendship or relationship. That's two. Give me a who a hand clap or something. That's the